What is going on, everybody? It is episode 182 of Pop Culture Crisis. My name is Brett. I am here with my co-host, a very special co-host. Would you introduce yourself, please? Hi, I'm Hannah Claire Brimlow. I'm a writer for TimCast.com, and this week I am a Sweet Brett's co-host, whether he likes it or not. <laughs> I, I basically, uh, I have monopolized your time this week. I, I basically had to beg. Uh, I'm like, please, please, I know, I know you already helped me out a bunch, but could you, like, help me out more? It's not like you don't do IRL at night, write your, you know, your five articles a day for the website. Uh, uh, am I privy to, like, whatever scraps are left is basically how this has worked. Hey, I feel like I got invited to, like, an elite club. Uh, and, of course, Mary is away this week. We miss her terribly. We hope she has a great trip. And she'll be back soon. You don't, you're not stuck with me forever. Well, uh, we are very happy to be to be stuck with you. But yes, Mary will be back uh, on Friday of this week. And our guest host today, our Monday regular, our champion. Would you introduce yourself, please, sir? I like that. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Dane Font here, marketing man extraordinaire and the patron saint of White Boy Summer. Dane, I actually feel like it's been weeks since we were. I think the last time we were on an episode together was uh, the 100th episode. The legendary 100th episode. That's wild. 80 ep- 82 episodes ago. Yes, I got to hear your voice. That is crazy. Uh, I, and I did uh, one of the one of the driving forces behind uh, having Hannah Claire for the week, on top of the fact that everybody here is as busy as they are. I just didn't feel right about placing Dane behind a bunch of stuffed animals. Uh, it, it felt like that would be, uh, you know, the the all of the screenshots would be used uh, used against <laughs> yeah. him forever, would they not? Um, you know what? I'm a uh, man enough to be behind a bunch of cute teddy bears. <laughs> I feel I, like this decor is really not my style more than anyone else's, but. We're, we're generalizing here. We're, we're generalizing. The, the teddy bears aren't really me either, but uh, we, got, we got a bunch of stuff to talk about today. We are going to talk about uh, Warner Brothers in their commentary uh, following threats made against J.K. Rowling on Twitter. Uh, I have some interesting stuff to point out in relation to the hypocrisy uh, of a lot of their statements. Uh, we're also going to talk about Alabama Barker uh, and an ad she was in that got banned in the UK uh, for what they called uh, the exploitation uh, of a minor. Too spicy. Yeah, it was too spicy, basically. We're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about Mindy Kaling uh, and the continued push to like not have regular pregnancy in Hollywood, which seems like a thing. We got that. We got Podluck. We got a bunch of other stuff. So if you guys are ready, we will just get right into it. Hannah Claire, are we ready? I am ready. Dane, are we ready? Not quite. Before we get into it, I want to know, Hannah Claire, in order, French toast, pancakes, or waffles? In order. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Okay. Pancakes, waffles, French toast. Oh, my gosh. <sighs> okay. I feel comfortable with this. I'm okay with who I am. <sighs> I mean, I guess like... Uh, fr- what do you guys say? French toast all the way. First toast. French toast. Number one French like, toast. Like, you guys are like French toast, gap. No, fr- yeah, I mean, I, for me, it's like French toast, pancakes, gap, waffles. Oh, what are you? French toast, pancakes, waffles. Mm. Always. That's okay. It'll be easy if we all go out. If there's like a platter situation, you guys can have French toast. I don't need Thank it. Thank you. Ooh, look at that. We, it is funny being from this side. Yeah, is it? Is it? Uh, is that? Fun? Well, my coffee is like much safer this time. <laughs> Normally, I'm like sitting here like, oh my. We get a crisis party, and I sit here like, please, please, please. It's gonna be okay. <laughs> uh, we, then we have to throw those bills away. Uh, so we had, we had uh, we had people up here working in the office today. I'm gonna tell the story beforehand. Uh, and like uh, there's an HVAC guy up here, uh, and they're looking around, and you can see. Thank you, and you can see them looking at like the money uh, uh, around here, and oh, like yeah. <laughs> they don't look, like. I, I'm guessing if unless they've worked in Hollywood, they don't know like whether it's real or not. So they're looking around, and we just look like really obnoxious, like millennial children who have made a lot like somehow made a lot of money doing something and just leave money sitting around it was absolutely hilarious I'm like i point out to the guy i'm like no, no, i no. hope they took some and they realize later <laughs> yeah that. Well, that would be bold considering it's literally a room full of cameras no like i don't think they did <laughs> they, i feel enough they guilty saying this no they, they did not they, i hope they did and they went to buy something with it and they and it passed that yeah like i i, I wish all that true <laughs> so we got uh before we get into that though chet our friend Chet yes. has something very oh, yeah. special. So do to tell I have to like be more excited about Chet you now do not. that I'm in Mary's seat, or can I be myself? You can be yourself. You're you're allowed to be yourself. I understand that he's amusing. He he is amusing, but he's got he's got serious words today. So let's hear what Chet has to say. Two types of excuses. There's excuses, and there's justifications. Ah. The excuses are the small bullshit lies we tell ourselves each day Word. about why we can't get in shape. Why we stay broke, which is really just lies we're telling ourselves to avoid doing the hard work. Amen. But the justifications are the much more dangerous ones. 
the justifications pop up when a serious mis- misfortune happens to us. Why are you so breathless? Because you just got done working <laughs> out. Injury, sickness. Oh, I broke my leg, so I got really fat, so I can't work out, and it still hurts. Oh, my loved one died, so now I'm depressed, and I'm just going to go to down this downward spiral on alcohol and drugs because I feel so shitty. What's happening? These are the ones that are the most critical because we have a justifiable reason to give in to the excuse. The whole world could be telling us, yeah, it's okay, you know, but it's not. But it's not. These are the ones that we absolutely have to laser focus on the most and give the most attention to not lit up, to become our best selves, to elevate. Bro. Otherwise, they're just another bullshit excuse. I feel like I'm done with this. our sob story. Done? Of why. You don't agree with him? I'm not loving this, like, creepy whispering well, about making us. He just went through a hell of a workout. I don't dude. even believe you. Just put your workout routine. I understand you can't because it's behind your paywall, but, like, show some pictures of, like, what your morning re- re- workout routine is. Like, why are we getting this weird you post-breathlessness? I feel like you don't even follow Chad on Instagram. I feel like I definitely don't. In fact, can confirm. What is going on? <laughs> Listen, Chet Hanks has perfect but, form. But look, Chet Hanks, waffles, pancakes, French toast. What do you? Where do you rank these things? Oh my God, that, Chet. I wonder. Uh, I, I don't what know. if he puts waffles first? Like, it, that, does it just that, ruin that, everything? That does kind of ruin everything, does it not? I have no idea. I think I might have to change opinions on waffles at that point. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Chet is actually good enough to like encourage you to change your opinion on everything else. That would be incredible. I mean, he'd make me rethink it, at least. Um, Listen, I think my dead relatives want me to have sick abs. That's all I'm thinking. So then why like, don't you have them to honor them? Why do we have to listen to Chet every day? Great point. She, she, she's got a point, ladies and gentlemen. Point. Guys, ah. it's my show now. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm just giving you guys a heads up. Uh, we are having issues still with the crisis meter. We are getting it worked out. Uh, we have bugs in the system, but the, the is thing... Is it going to... Like, is this mean that's just going to be a surprise crisis party? We have no idea what's yeah. happening. Could basically, yeah, that that could basically be what happens. We'll just have a, we'll have a surprise when it gets to when it gets to the limit. So, uh, let's get right into it. We're going to talk first about J.K. Rowling, and this is a like Dane made a comment to me earlier. He said that this feels like a very serious episode, which wasn't my intention by any stretch of the imagination. But I do have that tendency to kind of lean into t- stuff that I feel is like important to talk about. So it says Warner Brothers Discovery condemns threats against J.K. Rowling over her Salman Rush comments so basically she uh she tweeted out her support uh of salman rushdie after uh hannah claire do you want to give everyone a breakdown in case they don't know what happened with salman rushdie yeah salman rushdie is um an author he wrote this book called the satanic verses and had a fatwa ordered on him and last week while uh he was about to speak at an event in um outside of new york city he was attacked the guy rushed the stage and stabbed him he was immediately taken to the emergency room uh last i heard dane was the one who told me he's off off the respirator now but it was really violent um and the um is it iran iran just said they was not there it was not their doing but they think it was basically a good thing like that like he had it coming to him how sweet of him Uh, yeah super sweet so he, he's, a, he's a controversial figure in, in a lot of ways, but basically what happened here, what's going on here is that we have uh, a pushback into the realm where celebrities no longer do have the, like that freedom to just say what they want and expect nothing to happen. Like you're going to get some type of pushback now, it feels like. I mean, this is the culture that is the result of the absolutely moronic phrase that speech is violence. Yeah. And so they've taken it to such an extreme towards where, like, someone is just advocating his speech. And by the way, I I don't know anything of what he wrote, but, like, I doubt that it could be, like, even if it would be something that would offend me, that I would think it would justify these types of actions. So I'm going to read Warner Brothers' statement first. Uh, So so basically, uh, they said here, it says, Warner Brothers strongly condemns the threats made against J.K. Rowling, the company said today. We stand with her and and all the authors, storytellers, and creators who bravely express their creativity and opinions. Uh, Warner Brothers Discovery believes in freedom of expression, peaceful discourse, and supporting those who offer their views in the in the public arena. Our thoughts are with Sir Salman Rushdie and his family following the senseless act of violence in New York City. The company strongly condemns any form of threat, violence, or intimidation when uh, when opinions, beliefs, or thoughts might differ. And basically, what happened was uh, J.K. Rowling tweeted, "Feeling very sick right now. Let him be okay." That which is about as innocuous and general of a thing as you can make. And a person responded with something very simple. They said, don't worry, you're next. Which like, is... How can you have, like, 
the gall to like post that publicly first off like you're literally inciting violence but they say someone they don't have the username i mean it's not like someone who's been identified i think that all of this is crazy in part because we have a culture of celebrities who are like i'm gonna say something bold and daring and then we'll clap them like what was florence Pugh with her like yeah sheer, yep. like her sheer top and her nipples out and she was like people were like wow you're being so bold and brave like i i think we live in a culture where I, obviously like this attack is awful and i don't in any way you know i don't think this was something that should have happened but you know there are people who contribute to art and to culture in a really significant way and risk a lot like every time someone comments something mean and we have a celebrity clap back who's like well at least i'm more successful than you like that's not actually bold or brave like the stuff that and I, I hate to be so mean about it, but like there are, are is art and speech that is actually daring. And we live in this world where like a celebrity culture where you like yeah. respond to an anonymous Instagram account that calls you fat is like brave. I My, don't know. That maybe the most annoying thing about it right now is, is like all of the celebrities that think that they're saying absolute party line, basic modern day yeah. liberal talking points and talking about it as if it's brave. I was rewatching... Um, uh, I was rewatching Demolition Man last night. Uh, I don't know if anybody here has seen Demolition Man with uh, Sylvester Stallone. No, with nope. uh, Wesley Snipes. Well, it's a freaking satire masterpiece from uh, like 1993. And Dennis Leary plays this underground graffiti. Like he's like a leader of people who are not part of society anymore. And he and he talks about how like according to the, basically they live in like a perfected society now in the future. Uh, and he talks about he, he talks about he's like now I'm the problem because I believe in freedom of speech. I like to think for myself. I like to read. Uh, and, and what Hollywood used to believe, like at a time, like in the 90s and early 2000s, when we were in a far more, uh, a far less liberal, not liberal, you know what I'm saying? Like the conservatism is still fairly common in America in that place, in a far more real place of power in society. So those words actually carried more weight at that time. Now they do not. Mm -hmm. Like now all the things they're parroting are exactly what the... Uh, modern day corp fortune 500 corporations are all parroting back at you as well but they're saying it as if they're saying something bold and brave but the th interesting thing is like jk rowling has like the lowest common denominator like opposition basically to to the culture and yet that is enough of like a break a divide uh from the marching orders that it's somehow okay to like suggest violence upon her like she basically like stand for every single freaking woke opinion except for i guess like the, the term for her is like the turf Tur yeah trans -exclu exclusionary radical feminist that's why i wish this information this article had more information about the twitter account that like said this like because the implication is that um it's someone who in some ways thinks she has insulted uh, Islam but really like she has her own group of haters like yeah I I don't even know if that person even knows anything about Salman Rushdie when they made that comment they just don't like her I would be really curious to have more of a background unfortunately this article doesn't give it to us also but I want to talk about the fact that Warner Brothers talks about how they support these causes but they 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 nerfed her and took her out of the 20th anniversary edition mm. of the Harry Potter special they nerfed her I what a fantastic it. phrase thank you uh basically yeah they w they put her on screen very minimally because all the stars of the show the, whose careers she made were like I don't wanna she's a bad person at Emma Watson specifically yeah yeah and it's I'm here for all the witches um and, and basically every time she's on screen they have to like give you like a like a clarification of oh, the views of JK Rowling do not uh, uh just, equal the views of uh, of Warner Brothers or its subsidiary it's hilarious because they speak in Harry Potter like metaphors constantly oh wait yeah like nonstop is like you're such a Dumbledore no I'm a Hermione and, and it's like no, no but, like, she like she or if you believe the conspiracy theories like she and a bunch of other people put together a huge cultural uh you know uh phenomenon that there's nothing really to compare to uh and in some ways like what does she have to do with anything other than being sad that someone else got attacked like i don't think her work is that connected to some rushes except for the fact that they both write question yeah. mark you well, said conspiracy theories my ears perked like, or, oh conspiracy? you don't know this there's like a huge um I, I mean, I think it's commonly held. It probably came from the internet somewhere, but that J.K. Rowling didn't actually write her own books. Like, she had the basic concept of, like, a boy who has wizarding powers, and then, like, a bunch of people worked on it because the, they say, like, there's no way, given her background, that she would have been able to 
come up with all of like the latin phrases and like all the allusions and characters names like it's so detail oriented there's no way like the story is that she was on a on a subway or on a, on a train she wrote it on yeah. a napkin. and she wrote it on a napkin and it all just walked into her head and like there are a lot of people who are like no that was like a group collaboration and they just let her be the front of it uh obviously it's a conspiracy theory there's you know no reason to believe it's true i, there, it. I always heard it was like she was in a diner like uh, she's on a train uh, yeah yeah and, and wrote it like basically on a napkin and, and she was too shy to ask for a pen for a long time or something <laughs> that know. just this just sounds like something a publicist would add in yeah. there to like well, that's it, the whole it's theory too that, perfect that like she is Incredible. like she had like the basic idea and went to a publisher and they were like we we want to rip this off but we can't so you're gonna stay the face and we're gonna load it with details yep so, i love that she broke the party line and like now it's okay to be like there's no way oh, that that whammon can write this no this is a couple this was before the turf thing this has yeah. been around for well, a while also i want to point out that the she's in the uk where you can absolutely be punished for for tweeting in oh, the yeah. uk uh what was the, the guy's name joseph kelly I, I yeah oh yeah okay i had it here joseph kelly was 36 and had to delete a tweet or deleted a tweet after 20 minutes but got 150 hours of community service in the uk for posting an offensive tweet uh, it says uh, a Twitter user in the UK named Joseph Kelly has been sentenced to 150 hours of community service for posting a grossly offensive tweet about Captain Sir Tom Moore, a British army officer who raised money for the NHS during the pandemic. Mm -hmm. So in the UK, their rules aren't the same, same as ours. They don't have free speech uh, the same way we do, especially digitally. Uh, but Twitter did nothing to the person who tweeted at her. And I don't know, maybe... I, I don't know, Hannah, Hannah Claire, if you know if this would be accurate. It does saying, don't worry, your next even constitute an actual. It's something that you'd have to, like, a constitute an actual threat. Yeah. It's something that they'd have to work out in court. I mean, for the most part, yes, it does, because it's implying violence against her. Um, you know, this is why I wish with more information about the Twitter account, because, like, the other part is you'd have to it's probably an anonymous account that someone has to then track down all the details to which like they're just not gonna do i'm sure she does get a lot of credible death threats but you know this one doesn't actually seem like a call to specific action does yeah. that make sense actually the less detailed about it is the more scary it is to me like yeah because you don't know where it's coming from yes like like the it's it's the people it's, it's the it's the people with like anime avatars who may who leave like these detailed posts about the graphic things that the of viol acts of violence that they would like to to participate in that you always can tell it's like a teenager it's like an edgy boy teenager or just a, a mentally ill young adult who, yeah i just who, think mentally ill yeah like so so the this is that's actually a lot scarier to me when it's just a simple phrase uh, attached to something where, uh, like, if I was to type that out, I would be a lot more concerned about that than uh, yeah. if it was more graphic. I think it's the context in particular that makes it the scariest because, like, she she's the type of person that she's so polarizing right now. She could be like, top of the morning, everyone. And then everyone's like, ah, I hate you, and, like, write a bunch of stuff. Yeah. But this I'm one, sure all of her comment, all anything she posts, no matter about anything, has some kind of negative. That's like, what I'm saying. Like, so, like, she's at that point. Mm -hmm. Like, where, like, she could be like, I love $20 bills, and, like, Whatever, like she gets something. She could say hello, and they'd be like, "Shut up!" So sure. what you're saying is Nazi you're occupying say hello. space that is not for mm. you, basically. And but this was like as a result, like in consequence of like something generally tragic that Thank happened, and so like the mood was already somber, and they decided to like add to it even more so. So that's why I'm like, Ugh. like it seems like a particularly. Like, I mean, good for Warner Brothers for doing the basic thing that I would have expected from them. I'm, I'm sure in a lot of ways they have tried to distance themselves from J.K. Rowling. No, um, no they, they, they've doubled down recently because recently, of, of but the, like after all yeah, of the stuff happened yeah. originally, they like distanced themselves from her. They had the they had the thing recently where they, they asked questions about her at like a at like a press gathering. And they're like, we're not taking questions on that right now because she just makes them too much money. She's far too financial. But that to me is distancing. Like yeah. if they, they should have taken questions about her. I mean, like they should to be like she's allowed to have her own i mean in an ideal world yeah. i recognize this is like eternal optimism that actually will get me nowhere but like they should have been like yeah she's allowed to have whatever she wants she created this thing and like we aren't responsible for force feeding people one opinion yeah and instead they're like we can't take questions on you like you know how that's yeah. like but distancing still what do you mean taking questions uh, there was a thing where uh, it was not related to J.K. Rowling. It was related to some type of Harry Potter announcement at like one of the theme parks. And somebody asked a question about J.K. Rowling's comments on 
trans exclusionary radical feminism and Warner Brothers basically said like we support her free speech we're not going to talk about it it wasn't the place to talk about it anyways she wasn't there mm-hmm. like it, it wouldn't it didn't make any sense to a- to ask the question there anyways. also like those comments are years old at this point and like yeah. that girl cannot live them down no. I give anything for a world where entertainment is like on the side of entertainment and politics is on the side of politics yeah. and I would never have to hear a single actor's political opinion ever again. But then how would you Fiend. know how would you know what to vote for if the actors didn't tell you? I would personally text Chet Hanks, Chet, <laughs> what are we doing, my fearless leader? And he would go, Hey man, just keep <laughs> going and this creepy voice. I've been um I I've made it a point in my life to not look up actors' social medias, but I've gone through a fr- phase lately where I've been uh I'll admit that I've been looking up. I'm like, every time I see uh, like a, a show that I love or have loved, I'm like, I wonder what this, like I always look up the, the women. Cause like, uh, you know, cause you're you looking know. for a lady. There's one of two things that are always there. There's always a, either something about uh, Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Of course. Roe v. Oh Wade. God. Patron Saint Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Or, or, uh, <laughs> oh bl- or, bl- or black squares. <laughs> like it's on every single one. They, okay. So rank them. BLM, Ruth Bader Ginsburg, and what's the other one? Uh, Roe v. Wade, then Ruth Ro- Bader Ginsburg, because that's an older story now. Okay, so in order to cringe, rank them. No? Too much? No, Just right. so much. It's so hard to. It's Part so of it hard. is, it's like, so I feel like well, if you're playing, like, a celebrity left-wing influencer bingo there. You're like, okay, we got an RBG and a black square, but I don't see anything. Oh, there's the row post. Like, yeah. you know exactly what they're going to say. In some ways, and I know I say this all the time, I'm a broken record, but... I am okay if you have opinions that are different than me. I don't expect everyone to believe things I believe. But with celebrities in particular, I would like you to take action for causes that you really believe in, right? And in some ways, none of these are unique. None of these are specific. I always gave Taylor Swift a lot of credit because she was like suddenly like lefty and like gay marriage, even though that had already been decided. She like jumped on that bandwagon. But the thing that I gave her credit for was that she actually did campaign and back a lot of specific stalking laws in Tennessee where she was registered to vote. Like, I know that not everyone is going to agree with my views and I don't expect anyone to change them for me. On the other hand, like, if you really believe in a cause, put more serious effort in than just posturing on social media. Like Paris Hilton with the... Because you have the time and resources. Sorry, like Paris Hilton with the with the Homes for Wayward Children stuff, mm-hmm. right? Like, that's a cause that's not going to gain you any social capital. Well, not Dolly really. Parton... I know I, I know I am our old house's you, only Dolly Parton stand, but like, uh, she... In the 1960s, I'm not even sure when, she has had a literacy program that's been running yeah. for years that she doesn't like, she talks about it, she promotes it, but she isn't like, yes, I am better than you and I'm going to jump on your trendy cause to promote my thing. Like, she has just believed in literacy and giving out books to children and encouraging childhood uh, childhood reading from for, for, for decades. Like, that's how you do it. Mary's like angrily shaking her fist. No <laughs> reading. No so reading for anyone. Down with the printing press, says Mary. But the truth thing is, like, if ever <laughs> if everyone's an activist, no one's an activist. Yep. Like, it's the thing. Like, it's I, I, lazy I, activism to just repeat the thing that everyone else is repeating. Right, but, well, uh, because, for example, like I couldn't stand behind your atrocious like points of view about breakfast. And I accept that. I I, I don't want to be in an here. echo chamber Correct. where people only insist on one type of breakfast food. That's how we lose innovation, you know. Also, but there's also to me also it's limited by the the scope of like the platform, like in Instagram. So you're not going to get like articulated points anyways. But it's usually very Ooh, very that one was intense. Yes, it was. Usually, what you're going to hear uh, ends up being very surface level in the way that they play. You know that they make their arguments, or it's very emotionally manipulative, and that's the stuff that I hate the most is. Mm. The emotionally manipulative stuff. So, all right, let's let's get into some super chats. Hannah Claire, are you up to read super chats? Yes, this is the part of the job that I've been training for for all <laughs> of thirty minutes. Okay, are you guys ready for all my ability to read? All the way up the top, we're looking for Grofty. Hey, I already knew that. You don't need to just, coach me. Just making sure you are like a parent holding on to my Wait, handlebars, and I, I can man- ride my own bike. Am I okay. mansplaining? No, I think you're just producing the show. Okay. <laughs> uh, Grofty said buck 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 so ah, they mm. got a chicken might, might, have, might have switched over right from chicken city uh i've been saying that lately what i want to start doing is i want to go out at 2 30 p.m and start screaming that pop culture crisis is going You're to on start the wrong channel. yes like, I mean, like please go over to pop culture crisis in exactly 30 minutes it'd be it'd be awesome if t- tim took like great offense so i was like do not take people away from my chickens we do not cross promote. i feel here. like it'd be funny <laughs> if it's but is that even cross promoting or just like pirating people away move you should go in there and be like hey guys like 
like you sit in front of the chicken camera and you're like hey the stream's gonna go down for a couple minutes just head on over over to pop culture crisis we'll let you know when the chicken stream is back we need to do that and then we're like trapped yeah okay nathan settlemeyer said you got maple syrup in our sausage okay there are parts of mary's jobs i don't care for uh <laughs> delio turk i think is how you say it I'm not great at pronouncing names. Said, uh, "Don't touch girl, ghost girls' teddies. That's how you get cursed." Which yes, is very true. There, there's an even there is a ghost teddy back there. I've heard some talk, seen some talk in the chat that's like, "Is ghost girl haunting the room?" She, and I like to think Mary is always with us. Uh, I don't know what Mary's thoughts are. Being the 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 Christian, uh, I don't know what her th thoughts are on haunting. I we'll have to ask her when she gets back. We will act, ask her when she gets uh, back. Mary, if you're watching this, prepare. Uh, <laughs> Hobbit said, "HC that chat vid was the less." The less breathless than most. Yeah, that's, it was. Literally. That's He's usually horrible. like... Guys, why hey. do you listen to this like over like what? 35 year old man breathing heavily into his own cell phone? Because he just got done working out and then he's giving you great Did he show you that he was working yes, out? Yes, those are, f those are beforehand. The, I don't believe you. You see the burpees in the, in the story post before that. Have you seen his sick that. bod? No, I prefer not to. You do not Look, get that on accident. I think I, I like really do appreciate that he is trying to motivate people and he has this like story that he's trying to like, you know, motivational speaker, Tony Robinson himself away from. But like, guy, just like drink some water. Take a second. Don't like whisper breathe into my ear. Then I do want to ask the chat. Uh, if not Chet for uh, daily inspiration, oh, okay. who who do we go to? Uh, should we get a plethora of different people? Yeah. Uh, Dane believes that we should start talking Andrew Tate. Guys, Hanekler <laughs> doesn't know who Andrew Tate is. <laughs> I was like, wouldn't it, it be hilarious to hilarious. show Hanekler who Andrew Tate is? I am not sure about this. But yeah, you guys should send in what you will like for your motivational speakers and maybe we'll try it out for the rest of the week while I'm here. We, we could we could we could we could switch it up. Yeah. We could switch it up. Look at Brett being so flexible and open to change. That's okay. Me. Ben Ryder says Brett rep in the Timberwolves hat uh, rep in the Timberwolves with his hat. Are you a fan too? If so, <laughs> I apologize. Uh I am not I, I'm not really I come from a hockey and a baseball family, so we weren't really basketball fans. Plus I'm like five foot five year I think you're not allowed to like basketball if you're five foot five a guy but no i'm just i'm from the state of minnesota so i rep all sports teams uh that are here i actually have a hat and a, i received a sweater from the famous minnesota state screaming eagles that's i don't amazing. know if anybody here ever watched the show coach but i'm gonna have to oh my that. god yeah that's yeah. so old yeah. wow you're no, showing your age aren't you not even a real school <laughs> no i love it because i i come from a state that doesn't have a ton to write home about and uh i wear our one NHL team's logo in Jersey all the well, time. That's What's the beauty of the, the school isn't even a real school. It's a make-believe school from a TV yeah. show. That's inc like I've, I've maxed out all the sports teams in Minnesota. I have now You're had to go on into to fake, fake ones. Yes. That's kind of how I feel. So so <laughs> Connecticut used to have this hockey team called the Whalers, and it got sold and Thank traded you. away. So we don't have it anymore, but we still sell its merch in all of our airports. That's awesome. Yeah. Okay, so I'm only going to read half of Bradley Allen's comment. Bradley Allen says, let's talk about the real pop culture crisis, and then I don't want to read the rest. Uh, uh, I, I, I can't speak for Libby, my friend. I, I don't know. I also enjoy Libby's company, but I regret the rest of your comment. Uh, ooh, some talking. What I'm afraid is that I'm actually going to like scroll past something. Uh, 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 Waffle Sensei. Mm, what is happening? He says... No, uh, no. I, don't cut. <laughs> this is my job. Let me do it. Well, well then do it then. Oh, stop. Jeez. I don't like this at all. Uh, Come on. Yeah, I'm not in love with this situation at all. The first Waffle Sensei one? Yes. Okay, here we go. Thank you guys for bearing with me while I try to be the one and only Mary Morgan, which is impossible. I was going to say, it, it puts Mary's job into perspective. Really? <laughs> there has to be a better way to do this. Anyways, Waffle Sensei says, Brett, what did Dave <laughs> offer you to grift? The, uh, the record shows that you have been on team. Waffles are better than pancakes from the beginning. And now you pick French toast, then pancakes, then waffles? What did he offer you? Yeah, I Dave. offered him a waffle, I will, and then he ate it. He was like, gross, last. I will say this. That's what happened. What I, are you talking about? Waffles are great. Hannah Clara, don't test me. I one time, you're getting, you, at First, you're putting Chet, our, our sweet, sweet boy, into, and you're defaming him. I'm not defaming him. You I'm are explicit. defaming him. You're like, why is he so panty? And it's like because of his sick workout. And that's why he has his sweet bod. Okay. First of all. Second, we will have him daily. We will have him daily. <laughs> Jeff Formation. The Sundays that you're on. <laughs> okay. Waffle Sensei also says, you've broken my heart, Brett. I, with I, I that broken heart emoji. I like I, I, I like waffles when they when you don't do the little bit of syrup in every... I, I hate that. Okay, I'm also going to throw out another controversial comment. I'm actually not a huge fan of syrup. 
No. So, what? Yes, yes, yes. As a kid, I was like addicted to sugar, but the one sugary thing I really did not care for was syrup. It, it's changed since I've gotten older, but even now, I'm, I'm this is monstrous syrup. takes at this point. <laughs> I'm just <laughs> off the wall. You can't even predict where I'm coming from. I, I don't. I don't even know if I agree with freedom of speech anymore. <laughs> like, what is going? Do you think on? I'm just being controversial for the sake of it? You know, I'm like trying to make syrup? my splashy entrance onto co-host. She's like, they will know me okay. forever. Christopher Pool says, I'm trying to fix this. He he has indeed done his job. Be better. He, it looks that the crisis oh, meter. Oh, the crisis is, meter is back. It, it's back, and I believe it is working again. Okay, Christopher Pool just submitted one dollar, but he testing. did not give us an update. <laughs> Guys, let's hope it breaks so he has to commit more money to this Yay. hobbit says hc's comment on chet maker uh chet i think it's supposed to be makes her pcc's number one host thank you please continue to say that comment it on every video on social media <laughs> this is a hostile takeover of pop culture crisis look, just kidding mary's look, out of town i'm allowed to have my opinions on chet and i i don't agree with everything look he at says him starting to slow down the conversation chris Poole submitted one dollar but there's no comment should I maybe not read that? But I'm going to anyways. You should, I think. Okay. Caper2x says, HC, accept your fate despite your honorable father's wishes to go to law school. We need your wit and verbal abilities on the side of the angels. That's hilarious. Maybe we should bring my dad on Pop Culture Crisis. You that guys can fight with him. Very inter- ha- has, have you been enjoying doing IRL? I do like doing IRL. I'm really grateful for... I mean, I always felt like this when I was coming live here. Mm-hmm. Like, it's so fun to get to talk to you guys because mm-hmm. we know each other outside the studio, but... Especially with pop culture crisis, it's always like something different. IRL is fun because it is my main job here. So yeah. suddenly all this like weird up, weird like stored knowledge that I have gets like used. Um, yeah, the hardest part for me is like because of what I do now, I just don't have the, I'm, I'm less, oddly enough, less politically aware than I ever was before because I'm just so busy with work. I don't have the time to, to, to read everything that I used to read before. Or in a lot of times it would be, thank you. Uh, uh, would be watching like uh, I get like information. I, I watch Sticks's videos every day. I read a couple of things, but I Six just rules. Yeah, yeah, I just don't have the time to like. I was like, I looked into the like when like they raided Mar-a-Lago. I'm like, oh, the thing is, like, it. some weeks there's nothing, and some weeks there's so much. Yeah. So I don't blame you. Grofty says testing one buck, two buck, three <laughs> bucks. That's hilarious. Buck, buck. Um, but he. Wait, I'm but he gave five. But he so gave five. I was gonna say that's not six dollars. I'm gonna give two more. Buck, buck. Caper two X says Brett is mansplaining. <laughs> um, wait, then I lost it. Behave it says or, Brett is mansplaining. Service. Behave or will tell Mary. Oh, I think Mary already knows yeah. whether she's watching or not. The uh, I uh, I was mansplaining just a little bit. I apologize, guys. Thank you for your service, Brett. <laughs> I love that you apologize to the men in the chat. I'm really loving that. Sorry, guys. Oh. Okay, Jonathan Harris says, I feel like we're never going to get through this. <laughs> Is this how Mary feels all the time? Yes. Da- Dane just wants to burn the world bringing Tate. <laughs> I don't know what that means. Uh, Who uh, is Tate? Andrew Tate. Let's do it. Again, don't know who that is, but I at least you. tomorrow. Well, that sounds like the the words of somebody who doesn't own a Bugatti. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, uh, why do I work here? Nathan Koss. Uh, stop! I lost it. You can't <laughs> read ahead. Nathan Koss says, "I want speeches by Revolution Era generals." I agree. I don't know that what that was a response to, but I felt like that was directed at Dane. You get pretty like authoritarian and like inspiring in your speeches. Uh, gold macro, macro. Metro. Macro. Uh, you guys leave Hannah Claire alone. She's awesome. Thank you. Well, we 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 love Hannah Claire here. We I just, do feel you know, like the ultimate disavow. younger sister in this room right now. <laughs> disavow. Disavow. Dave, come on, Dave. Not Dave. Uh, Carnal says, "Hey, crisis actors. Now that Dan and Hannah Claire are here together, does this mean that?" We're in for twice the crisis parties. Oh, yeah. That is totally in your control. As you guys may or may not know, I think Dane and I are either tied or... Oh, no, 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 no. We no. both got Someone five parties, right? have the news, does You she? have not been informed yet. Dane, Dane set a new record what's, on Friday. What's twice. Seven. Um, whatever. <laughs> I, mean, I, I honestly... I also want to be better, but I, that's so cool. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, and yeah, so that's up to you guys. That means that we should have a grand total of 11 today. So <laughs> we should. Mm-hmm. Both our sugar daddies combined. I feel like 10. D- like D- Dave and I are worth 10 <laughs> crisis parties. <laughs> Why I, not I, d- I throw myself at the depo- or at the what does Michael Scott say? I throw myself at the deposition. Uh, it's all it's totally up to you. Okay, Hobbit says HC makes HC makes Dane an authoritarian in one episode. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> Literally. 
Hannah Claire is calling for a hostage party. I, in fact, am, but on the contingency that we have 10 crisis parties. That's my personal goal. Someday, uh, that may happen someday. You never know. Waffle Sensei says homemade Belgian waffles with two scoops of ice cream and strawberries and syrup. Don't even lie. You want the waffles. Can we See? like call this waffles, propaganda out? Waffles have a structural integrity to them that allow them to have multiple toppings. How yes. would you know? You don't even put syrup in it. But like you can put all kinds of things on them. Like what? You can use them to make breakfast sandwiches. You can put syrup. You can put butter. You can put fruit. You can do all kinds of things. You could put more if you're into like jams and stuff. I'm not going to argue with you on my breakfast choices. I'm comfortable with who I am. We got okay. One more. Nessa London says, you're doing great, Hannah Claire. Thanks. I'm not married, but I am here nonetheless. Thank you, Nessa. Vanessa's a friend of mine. Oh, wait. <laughs> Is she the one who read that book? That I like recommended <laughs> could have been. I don't. I, I'm not sure. Nessa, is that you? That might that might have been her. All right, we are going to move on and we are going to talk about. Pre- uh, this is uh, this story is very very. This is Hollywood in a nutshell, ladies and gentlemen. Ugh. Pretty Little Things ad featuring Travis Barker's 16 year old daughter banned in the UK for portraying the teen in a quote sexual way. This is peak Hollywood in, in all ways, shapes, and forms. Uh, it, it's the uh, it creeped me out just like I had to like squint and make sure that it wasn't like anything like over the top and it's i don't know if you would consider the images to be untoward but just the fact that they marketed it this way uh is everything that hollywood always proves itself to be so it says a pretty little thing ad campaign featuring alabama barker has been banned in the uk for portraying the teen in a sexual way the advertising standards authority said that the campaign violated the count the country's decency codes uh, channel that teen dream realness with barely their micro mini skirts, a brand website featuring Barker said, according to the ASA. Uh, I'm going to ask off the bat, does this, uh, ups- like, not upset, but does this... Uh, I think you- this is good action to take. You think that they did the right thing? Yeah, I do. I mean, the thing is, so Alabama Barker has kind of had a spike in popularity because her dad married Kourtney Kardashian. Yep. And so people have been checking her out more on social media. And she is very active. I mean, a lot Nothing of teenagers that she are... posts is appropriate. <laughs> yeah, that's it. That is the first thing that you notice. And she just turned 16 yeah. recently. Like, I mean, she has been pro- posting hypersexual posts on her Instagram for a little while now and then also on top of that like when her father was hospitalized you know she does what all teenagers do which is exploit it for more attention on the internet um she doesn't seem like a bad person necessarily she's just so young and the ad campaign was over the line i think that as a culture we should hold ourselves to a higher standard and not be like oh but she's young so it's just fun and flirty like i used to hear that all the time and yeah, like I don't know. This is just—it's just weird. I also want to be like, where is your dad? Who was like, I'm very Catholic at one point. I absolutely agree. And like the thing is, like I so they, later in in the in the next article, they go on. It's like we definitely didn't mean it that way. The reason why she had a lollipop in her mouth is because we just want to show that she's being playful. It's like first what, of all, kind of playful. Question yeah, mark? Oh, like miss me with that. It's like when have lollipops been? like playful and second of all i don't think a company that's called pretty little thing putting a 16 year old in scantily clad clothes can claim that they just oh my god i i, I, I didn't I no know idea. the optics of that is that what that means i had no idea oh my god like right it's like come on dude and, but like i'm glad so we've talked about so uk is pretty damn woke like pretty damn woke so the fact that you, the I'm glad that the UK could stand up and be like, okay, well, this is a line, you know. This is just like exploitative. Like I don't, I don't understand what you're doing. It's incredible, and it's like, I mean, it's again, it's called Pretty Little Liar, the Pretty Little Thing. Like you are playing with fire, yay! Oh. <laughs> I was I was doing tech su- I was asking tech support again. I'm like, did it go? I was just making sure. Um, it's all tech support has a name. You rude guy. <laughs> I'm sure the chat know who's tech who's who tech support is um yeah i totally agree with Dane. like it is also crazy that they're even trying to pretend like they didn't know exactly what they were doing it's ridiculous everyone including alabama barker who in some ways like does it to herself like she clearly wants to be viewed as like not just like an instagram influencer but like a hypersexual instagram influencer but she's also a minor where is her mom where is her dad being like this is maybe a bad idea who is her mom her mom's name is Shayna something. She, she and Travis Barker were married for a while. Um, I think she was a former Playboy model. I don't know a ton about her <laughs> other than when she, Carta, uh, when Travis Barker and Courtney started like posting that they were together. She made all kinds of like 
basically i am slightly jealous comments on the internet being like i'm so happy for him i mean it's an interesting way to behave but i'm so happy for him they also <laughs> said uh the the company pretty little things said they did not intend to sexualize uh miss barker well I, that's what i think they're trying to skate by on which is like if you, you look how at her they say that they whoa that was intense uh I think they're trying to say like if you look at her Instagram account it doesn't look that different but at the same time like you are profiting off of sexually suggestive pictures of a 16 year old like that's creepy and weird the the so they, they mention um, that the, this goes back to what we were talking kind of about Barbie core recently this is very right in there with Y2K trends mm. uh, which well you, that's the collection it's yeah. called the Y2K collection. if I can have one more point so I used to work in advertisement agencies right and like when you're gonna do a shoot like there are several steps to this this is why like i will not let this go down so like first of all you have like shot list you like specify the wardrobe the makeup like, because you hire all these it's people. like a concept that you come up with beforehand yeah. they didn't just, right. it doesn't just happen by they accident they didn't just stumble then into the studio the shots get taken the shots get chosen they get touched up they get put on there gets copy gets put on and then it gets promoted so at no point in the like the several professionals that this went through like at people knew like you are purposely sexualizing minors also they point, point out that that the target audience is 16 to 24 which means that the material that they're selling is intentionally supposed to be sexualizing underage people mm -hmm. to begin with uh they said she was 16 at the time they'll argue that pretty little things is like a rave or club wear and at some places especially in the uk there are like underage clubs where you can start being admitted at 16 mm -hmm. i don't actually think that makes it appropriate but i will say i think that would be part of their defense like oh we're club wear we're we're going out clothes i think a better defense would be like if you're 16 where are you going yeah i know right I to school I the next day and not wearing Ma me and mary were actually talking a while ago about like the show pretty little liars and mm -hmm. i was like I, I made some comment hey no judgment uh judgment no <laughs> janelle Parrish is yeah, no 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 okay so but the point is like in janelle that Parrish, show, are you listening they, are, loves they you. are uh adults the actresses are adults that are portraying minors but they like uh, i made some comment about I was like they dress them inappropriately mary goes no they just dress them like like suburban moms like that want to like like uh middle class suburban moms trying to go out and, and yeah they're like young. weirdly stylish the other thing is that they're always in like complete full makeup like yeah. Yeah. It, that seems kind of crazy and but also unreal, they're on tv so they're going to be in makeup anyways yeah so my, my point was going to be that my point is going to be like their only defense which is not a defense but more like a misdirect would have been like there's shows like euphoria where you get like dying piece chicks getting railed like every episode and like you guys have an offense with this it's like why not both well, yeah. the, at least that, as awful as that is, those are legal adults that That's are I know, but playing unfortunately minors. portrayed. It's like I said, and I make that point all the time. Like, even in the porn industry, they're not allowed to do that. Can I ask, like, does it make you guys uncomfortable? Like, this, like, idea that, like, she's a minor who's, like, being dressed up like this? Not For knowing how old she Yeah, the, I didn't know how, how young she was until I read this article, and it, it freaked me out. So it says, various poses were also considered sexual, including the image of, of Barker shown spraying a water hose that was positioned between her legs, which the ASA expressed focused the eyes on, uh, focuses the eye to her crotch area. We also consider the text, channel that dream, uh, that teen dream realness was barely there, micro skirts, further highlighting Miss Barker's young age. The references to barely there micro mini skirts were also likely to be seen as sexualized they also talk about sunglasses and say that's hot which is very clearly like they don't get it but it's clearly a paris hilton yeah 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 yeah, yeah. The, that's hot thing is like uh, the ultimate y2k reference yes. but th like this is so weird to me also like where i mean i guess her dad is posting his new wife's like butt all over instagram so maybe their family's relationship to like expressing yourself sexually is very loose and open but like I, I this does seem crazy there's no one in her life who was like Maybe this is a bad idea. I mean, I'm a. What you what you ask? Like, do I take offense to this? Like, breaking character. I don't for, think it makes you offense, but like, does it make you uncomfortable? Incredibly, because like, so I'm an older brother, right? And I have like a sister around this age, and like, you know, she also has an Instagram, and I'm just gonna leave it at that. And it's like, you know, it's. This is not what you want to see. America. You, I'll always like think of her as four. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Always. And so. I just, I just can't help but like be like you this is like someone else's little sister or younger daughter as well and it's like you can't 
be in that position without an adult consenting for you to be there. Mm-hmm. Yep. You know what I'm saying? And like, I'm not the parent, but like, sh- had I been in that position, I would've been like, hell no. Are you kidding me? Yeah. She doesn't need to be de- depicted like this. And like, if you decide later in your life you want to, that opportunity will always still be there. Right. But like, you don't need to be doing this at 16 to sell clothing from like a mass marketing company. Like, this doesn't make any sense. So I brought what you're saying? The, um, the other thing about this is is that for the uh, for the company uh, or or for Travis Barker them is there just a lack of uh, of structure in the home? Well, I think there's like a fear of telling your daughters like that they should be more covered up or more modest, and that makes you seem oppressive, mm-hmm. right? I think what's happening is like she is 16 years old and putting herself in a risque way on the internet, like. There is time for that later. If she wants to do that at 18, 19, 20, I still will think it's a bad idea, but she'll be able to decide on her own. Like, I think parents have an obligation to their young children as well as their teenagers to keep them, you know, sheltered in some way so that they can make mistakes when they're adults as opposed to making mistakes when it is so early in their lives they'll never be able to take it back. These images are going to live on forever. Yeah. You you mentioned euphoria. We talked about this, obviously. I was uh, It seems like Hollywood can't stop pushing stuff. Degrassi? The, uh, the there was an example recently of a, a show that's coming out now. I don't even remember the name of it off the top of my head, but it's about like moms and daughters who do like uncomfortable. Like it's like they sit naked in their bed together. I'm like, why are we talking about this? It's Let's freaking get weird, it together. dude. Like why? Like why is this? Like you said, this uh, this doesn't happen by accident. They didn't just show no. up one day and have these pictures taken. You don't make a show like the one I just described by accident. Some producer had to be like, you know what would be a good idea? Let's cover this subject. I, I wish I still had that thing pulled up. It's a campaign. You know, like it, it's, it gets, the copy gets conceptualized around the, the imaging. Mm. So like all the branding is done around that. So like they just can't claim that, period. And like also like another example of a show like this, Degrassi, which like... Again, it's like uh, I, I haven't seen Euphoria. I've only seen clips of it. But what, from what I've seen from clips, like it goes definitely like a step above Degrassi. Yeah. So it says, in light of the backlash, Pretty Little Thing said they had chosen Alabama as the model for their campaign as she reflects their average customer who is typically aged 16 to 24. The fast fashion giant also claimed they wanted to put forward a message of body confidence to encourage and empower young women to embrace their bodies and inspire confidence. This makes me so mad. Like, stop perpetrating this lie of like, we're doing it for body positivity and body like confidence. Like we don't want you to feel ashamed. Don't let the patriarchy get you down. Like stop, you're not doing that. You're doing it because you think you're going to be able to exploit her already overexposed life for your brand. Like you don't care about body positivity. In fact, you thrive off of body insecurity so that women will buy more clothing and always keep up with the trends because they're trying to look good. By their logic, you must be really insecure right now because you're wearing a sweater. Uh, they, by their logic, I'm really insecure because I don't post myself half naked on Instagram. I mean, yeah. I don't know what to say. I just think that this is a lie that they're saying and they're trying to like, if they throw up the body positivity card, then everyone's going to be like, oh, well, what are we supposed to say back? Like you're in marketing, right? Like what's the response to that? Like, no, we want women to feel ashamed of themselves. Like, no, no, no. we <laughs> think that it's inappropriate to exploit minors regardless of what her parents permit her to do on her personal Instagram. That's what I, that's why my argument was I'm that. I'm very ranty today. I'm drunk with power. <laughs> it's all <laughs> the, the chair p- inspires it. It's all the waffles. Uh, that's why like my thing is like, you can't like, you can't like justify yourself for this. You can only misdirect. That's why like, but if I would were to be hired in this demon company, it would have been like, no. Would you talk- take a job from them? No. I mean, how much you pay? No, but like, no. But that's like, not. Th- I mean, maybe her parents were like, oh, well, she's making a lot of money doing this brand deal. Like, we might as well let her. Like, I still think that that's not a good enough reason. You shouldn't decide that your child's privacy and protection is worth some dollar amount. Like, you'll never get it back. But. I can understand where they're like, well, she's starting her career this way as an influencer. I mean, maybe I would work for them. Just kidding, Tim. If, if and like maybe help them with like some like d- direction where like this would be like so hypersexualized. But like, again, like I don't I don't know if like hiring Dane Fond Marketing Man Extraordinaire and Trademark, it would be the move for like a like a female fashion brand. So uh, is this uh, is this on America then for not having similar rules in place? I'm asking that question as somebody... Well, Pretty Little Thing is a UK-based company. Okay. And so, 
think that but are being but they're influencers clearly from america yeah but like i'm wondering if initially the advertising goes through british firms like we don't know how americans uh, advertising is responding to it it's funny how deeply held our beliefs are that even when you when you come to question it so I grew up in, an, in a generation full of the, you know, sexual liberation. Uh, and the idea was that you don't want to be repressive towards adults who want to behave this way. You know, coming out of... And we just the, blurred the line all the way down. Um, so, yeah, out, coming out of the Christian conservatism that was beforehand, you're trained to now push back against any type of... Uh, not accept uh, against anyone that says to not accept something, right? You're supposed to be like, oh, well, let them do what they want. You're you're not being very liberating. Mm -hmm. But the idea here is now they've pushed that line so far that they're doing it with minors. And then the stodgy old adult needs to come out and say, look, this isn't okay. Look, like, and even I feel weird saying that because you're trained to believe that it's not your business uh, and liberation this, liberation that. But this is a minor. It's not okay. Yeah, I think it's just bizarre. I mean, I really question, like, what is happening with her parents. But on the other hand, like, this is an established look for her. Her Instagram profile has had a lot of, like, you know, super intense photos. You know, she, even the way she does her makeup and, like, her look, she looks like she is, you know, older than 16. Yeah. And that's why it's confusing for a lot of people. I just, I question... You know, and it's not even like we have the excuse of like her parents aren't on social media, so they don't know what she's doing. Like her family comments and likes her photos. Like it is crazy to me that we live in a world where like this seems okay. <laughs> Given what the stuff she posts, it would be weird to see my like your dad like. And one prior of those to posts. this, she was Dude. 15 years. I mean, yeah. like she has been. She she turned 16 recently. Like she is. I, I don't use the term overexposed lo loosely. Like she why there was no check on this at any point is crazy to me except for the fact that it's like f fame like she is like building her own audience she comes from this famous family like this is how she's gonna make money and so like that that makes it okay i guess Dude, even tiktok that like thrives around content like this basically like they take down like daily like hundreds of accounts of like minors like da dancing like promiscuously yeah. because they, they want nothing to do with that yeah and it's like we got a, like a platform like tiktok and it's like too much for them you know like a full mainstream marketing campaign like should be a lot but i will say just like silver linings is that at least the culture is starting to move in the direction where people are starting to apologize for this because i feel that as soon as like last year it would have still been up it would have been like enjoy it you know like they, they would have been like no it's perfectly fine for a 16 year old to, to do this mm. whereas now like there was like some form of you know someone was like hey wait this is bad exactly and i think they took it down right uh it's no longer available in the uk itself. well there we go yep. at least you know and i don't you said earlier, like, is this a difference between UK and America? Like, again, I don't know if America will permit it. I mean, you'd have to check maybe her Instagram if she's sharing photos on her own I think or whatever. Um, but I think because it's a UK-based company, the ad st the ad uh, launches typically start there. Yeah. All right, let's do super chats. Okay. Uh, Afferets, I don't know how to say it. Of set, get that. Get the. Super crisis party, Hannah Claire. Would it be a super crisis party if we get to a hundred? Super mega or ultra to, crisis party. Well, that's okay. If we get to hundred, if we get to ten. Yeah. Thank you so much, uh, Jeffrey Max. Hello, my favorite media experts. FYI, J.K. Rowling's <laughs> name is pronounced like bowling. Yeah. Row your boat or rolling down a hill. So it's J.K. Rowling. I don't know when I started saying Rowling. Ra I, used to, oh, I, I think that's like the Midwestern influence in this house. That is definitely. She the gave Midwestern. up correcting people years ago. Keep up the great work. Thanks. Yeah, it's it's Rowling. We uh, concede. I, I um as somebody whose people have been mispronouncing my last name for years, I just I quit. Rowling, America. Yeah, exactly. Um, and I get crap for my Minnesota voice here uh, quite a bit. Uh, Mary sent in five dollars or four ninety nine. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Yes, sent in ninety nine cents. Thank Very you. cool. Uh, Chris Poole sent in a dollar because he's obsessed with crisis parties. You guys, he wants one as badly as you do. <laughs> uh, have Owens. 
PLT equals grooming products. Yep. I think that's true. Also, mm. it did initially start as like club wear, super cheap club wear, like think Forever 21 for like college age girls. It's just like who also shops at those things? Girls at the end of teen, like, you know, 15 to 18 year old girls. So gross. I don't um, think you want to read the next one. Stop right, going ahead of me. It's my job to read the super chats. Unless you want to read it. If you want to read it, you can read it. Hold on, I have to find it. Uh, is it from I need to stop watching YouTube yes no I'm good thank you but I appreciate the super chat you're always contributing to our sweet crisis parties this way thank you all right we're going to talk about Mindy Kaling and I I, I especially wanted your opinion on this one like we, partially because I sent yeah, you the article you sent me the article but I, I wanted you to I read review. this headline and my head like exploded I thought about writing for it for the site then I was like nope this goes to Brett do you want to do you want to go ahead and read uh, read this sure okay so Mindy Kaling who was in the office and she uh, did the Mindy Kaling Mindy project she has um, said her advice in this interview she did with Marie Care, which is a teen girl magazine said uh, I wish every 19 year old girl would come home from college and that the gift instead of buying them jewelry or vacation or whatever for stuff what uh, is that their parents would take them to freeze their eggs they could do it at once uh, uh, do that at once and have all these eggs for them and for their future she remarked she's basically talking about how like it's really good to her quote is to focus on your 20s and 30s and on your career and yes love like Put off having children is her message. Is this like the? This is clearly something that only somebody with wealth and status can right. can actually do. It is expensive to freeze your eggs. Yes. First off, because you have to undergo for, uh, hormonal fertility treatment to like prep your body to harvest the eggs. Then you have to pay for freezing fees. How long does that take? It can take a couple of months, but it's like <laughs> it is disruptive to so, the body. So when you're 19, they want she wants you to come home from college. And, and then go through this extremely disruptive process. Yeah. She wants you to inject hormones that you don't need in your perfectly functioning body. Because feminism. Because feminism. And I guess the idea is like, then you have saved your good eggs. So when you get off birth control, like they're still there or something. Also, why would your parents fund this like yeah. crazy lifestyle? Why wouldn't your parents encourage you to think of having a family as a positive part of your future, not something that will hold you back from living a wild, wonderful and wild 20s and 30s? The, the, I'm really thinking it twice about giving my take on this because like one day I'll be a top G as well. And I, I, don't, <laughs> I don't want this to like come back and bite I, me. Now I have to know what you want to say. Oh, man. Top this G. is a legendary cope. In what way? This is cope sprinkled with cope and with a douse of ambulance. This is, I, I if this isn't like textbook projection, I don't know what is. Like, I just think this is just how, oh my goodness, Dane Fon, are we saying this? We are for the culture! And like, I just think this is how her life worked out. Yeah. I don't know if this is how she wanted her life to work out. And this is how her life worked out. And she is just saying it for, you know, Thank you. potential. I, I don't know how to pronounce her name. What's her name? Mindy, Mindy Kaling. Mindy Kaling's in the future to be like, hey, this isn't bad. This is like girl boss stuff because you do have to focus on your job and whatever and then love well then her next thing is like and the thing is when you are emotionally ready to have kids and even if you don't have a partner you could still have kids team they, why are you coaching people to live like messed up lives why don't you tell people the truth which is that like life comes with a lot of choices and sometimes you have to commit to a relationship and sacrifice things and actually having kids at an early age could perfectly be great it doesn't mean that your life is over like that's what i hate about the way hollywood talks about motherhood it's like i had this career but I had to leave it all behind because right. i wanted to be a mom like they the amount of like bragging they do about abortions just so they can have a career is disturbing yeah um i think all she's trying to say is like this is perfectly fine because i'm doing it right there's nothing wrong with what no. i'm doing it's like no there isn't look live right? your life the way you want to live For girl uh -huh. but let's be real most people can't afford to just consistently pay for freezing fees and then undergo IVF again when they want to have a kid, which is what you're advocating. IVF, like one round of IVF can be tw anywhere from 20000 to $50,000. Are you telling me that like you think that your parents, you these college girls whose parents are probably paying the tuition should pay, pay to freeze their eggs and then 
pay later to have them put the eggs back in when they have a perfectly functioning body because they don't think about how life works as they live it also that you don't have to have a traditional family because a traditional family is oppressive now. well and this is the thing that i think and i think this is a harder thing to talk about but like we kind of coach young people to not get too serious with people that they're dating too early on because there Mm. might be something better around the corner you might go to grad school in a new city and meet someone else and then wouldn't you be sad that you stayed with this person who you actually have a great relationship with i think that we are afraid of commitment in so many ways i think the fear in hollywood of children has a lot to do with this like once you have a kid you are committed you are stuck and if you want to be a good good parent you have to sacrifice in a lot of ways it's a big thing for them to talk about like why why so fast why why have kids and get married in your 20s but they don't tell you that you're much more like your ability to have kids in your 30s goes way down yeah and like she's saying that like you should put it off you live your 20s and 30s so have a kid when you're 40 so that when they're 40 you're 80 question mark like this doesn't make any sense it is good to have kids whenever you feel ready for them and i wouldn't advocate anyone who doesn't want to become a parent you know have a kid before they feel ready on the other hand like i think this idea that like well you could just with science put it off is a lie and it's ultimately telling people to live a more disruptive life where they are taught not to just commit and pour into things that are important to them don't you have to like pay for them to like for like the maintenance once they're frozen as well yeah you have to pray to freeze them and then like i said you can't just be like well i'll eat the egg and then i'll get pregnant like you have to go (laughs) through ivf again i want to (laughs) imagine uh imagine for a second that which is more hormones which is more disruptive to the body sorry keep going let's just change this a little bit and say um uh, imagine your parents said this to you but now imagine your parents come to you and say we want to freeze your head if you die (laughs) so that we can so that we can uh bring you back to life once we conquer the death barrier no i would counter with if your parents look at you and say hey we'll pay for you to freeze your eggs because we really want you to focus on your career you should say will you actually save that money and make it a down payment on my house instead so that when i have a family i can live somewhere with them do they just want to get rid of the concept of fathers altogether yes and also they want it to be like they they want it to be like they want to give women this unrealistic idea that like science has advanced so far that you can have it all the thing is all of it is not always that great and you have to make choices and be decisive in life on occasion and that's really hard like committing to a partner and committing to having children like i get it that's not something to take lightly on the other hand thinking you have this weird loophole and mommy and dad are going to pay to freeze your eggs like also very serious and bad only a rich person would make that claim it's it's like saying like if you're poor buy a house uh, if you can't afford gas, just buy an electric car. No, but like, listen, I want to say there are, and it increases by a day, the amount of women that would be good at both. That would be good at like not only being, you know, a parent, but also being a professional. Like, I don't want to deny that. But also just trying to think of things in like a point of view. Let's say you're the type of person where you lean to one more more than the other. And let's say for a, just Thank for you. example's sake, that one is parenthood okay what so i hear a lot from younger women just by the grapevine just through life is like i want to get my degree you know i want to work for like one or two years and then i want to have my family and focus on them and it's like okay how much is your degree Mm -hmm. you just paid upwards of like 100k dollars just to you know to and work like for a couple of years to earn like 30 to 40k for two well, years and then like and the th- joke used to be when women started going to college more it was like this is where the mrs degree comes from like yeah they're actually going to college to pay for the opportunity to meet someone who's going to have a higher to make more money because going to college used to be a way to guarantee that you were rising up in socioeconomic class but that's not true anymore so you are you are paying to be in debt to meet someone who will also be in debt Mm -hmm. to then put off having children because you can't afford to have them like this is a broken system do not listen to mindy kaling who has been successful and And i'm sure she's got a lot of positive qualities i'm not meaning to trash her but like this plan is bad this is why i talk about the importance of this show uh and why i think it's important to talk about this stuff uh, in a nutshell, is that these are the people that are influencing your children. Uh, and if you want to say that even the, these people aren't really influencing your children, they're influencing the people like our age, fine. The kids that are influencing your children on TikTok and, and social media have been raised by people who were influenced by these people. Mm-hmm. Right. This is a problem for society as a whole. The degradation of the concept of traditional family. Look, I don't care 
man, man, woman, woman. That doesn't bother me. Two parents in the household is considerably shown to be the Better. most effective means of raising a family. They flat out deny this. Yeah. And it's creepy. Well, and on top of that, she is saying, like, put off having children. She's also going to turn around and say, I'm just going to, you know, Republicans, conservatives or whoever <laughs> don't support having a uh, paid maternity leave. They don't support working mothers. They don't help the family. Girl, you don't help the family. You're saying you should put off having a family. Like, if we really wanted women to be successful at both, we would recognize that most of them want to have children and that they should be able and encouraged to have them early in life because the medical risks are lower for both mother, mother and child. And it's unrealistic to think that most people can afford to both freeze their eggs and go through IVF later in life. She can, and plus, she, she's talking about it's like, yes, and love. But what she's really saying is you can have the kids on your own if you want to. But she can afford nannies. She can afford daycare. She can afford to have that child taken care of. All she those, can afford to freeze her two daughter's eggs when the times come. All of those roles, which will cost her a fortune would be taken up by two people if it was done through a traditional household. Mm -hmm. So also, it, is, it is truly something for only the, the most privileged of people. It's just the most strange comment. And I feel like it's a fun headline because it's like, oh, she says freezing your eggs. But there's someone out there who's going to be like, maybe I should consider freezing my eggs now that I'm 21. No, it's so expensive. Why would you do that? Why don't you just like know that you want to be a mom and try to, you know, the best you can date in a way that helps you find someone who also wants to start a family and then you guys meet and like each other and i would advocate getting married and then have a family like why do we have to say but actually your career is incredibly important like right. your career i know this is a trope your career is not going to take care of you when you're like on your deathbed guys dude oh my god sorry i'm in i am drunk no, with power with my rant I, I love it dude like for real because like i think of that so often right now mm -hmm. Of all the dog moms and dog dads, they are gonna die lonely. The uh, lonely. the dog parent, the the animal parent thing is. Uh, I love dogs, love cats. Talking about it like it's your kid is weird. No, also Absolutely. like you're doing that because you're being told you can't, you shouldn't have children, and maybe it's too expensive for you to have right now. But also like, maybe you just have Thank to you. decide what your priorities are. Again, I love animals. I think that if you have a dog that you love, excellent, great, one hundred and ten percent. But think carefully about whether you are just trying to put off growing up and having a child. And, and additionally, I feel like a art kind of argument that they might do against like the point that we're presenting is that, Oh, well you just take on the debt. You know, it's like a worthwhile cost. You focus on your career and eventually you'll make it up. How this country in particular, I think, and these generations are treating debt as if it's nothing is frankly embarrassing childlike and unsustainable mm -hmm. if you believe on god's year of 2022 if you believe in boomer economic economic logic still buddy i have a bridge a cow and an elephant to sell you I because you are a gullible clown do you okay? know who the like the two girls i went to a really small high school with less than 100 people in my graduating class and i don't keep up with them but through facebook or instagram the two p women that i knew who were buying houses first were one had gone and gotten her esthetician's license and the other one is a hairstylist yes they have partners who also have good jobs although as far as i know both men are blue collar workers like nary a four-year degree amongst them they bought a house way before i did in an, a more expensive state than i currently live all in. the women that i know that do hair or makeup are all doing very well for they themselves. do amazing and this girl when i knew her i mean she was super sweet and she her mom was a hairstylist she always loved hair she knew she was gonna do it she travels she has a house i don't know like again i don't really know her you know we went to high school together social Thank media you. kind of contact oh thanks so much but like there are other careers and you don't have to go into debt and like if you love reading or whatever you love, super cool. But like, you don't have to go into debt to do these things. If you want to meet, some, if, if you are, and I respect this so much, if you're going to college because you want to meet a man who is ultimately going to have a good career, like maybe just do more interesting things in your life and you will probably yeah. meet him out in the wild. The, uh, my, my favorite is how they always, whenever the, 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 everyone knows how the school never gets blamed for school debt. It's always the government that gets blamed. They never hold the school responsible. Well, the thing is with. Because schools, it's government insured. But I, it's government insured. You can't go into debt on student loans. So there is no reason for schools 
other than I don't know morality to stop charging crazy amounts. But it's hilarious to me how the government always ends up getting the the blame and never the school. It's both ways. That's why I don't loans. advocate donating to your college or uh, institution. And if you do feel the need to donate to your university or your grad school program, or whatever, you mark your gift so intensely they cannot send it anywhere else. I had this old article pulled up that says gains in women's rights haven't made women happier, and why is that? It's <laughs> Uh, it's from like six years ago and it's like it's only getting worse like uh, well I feel like six years ago is really where third wave feminism kind of starts splintering to fourth wave feminism which is a bananas concept they, they, really they blame, just born to make everyone unhappy they blame women's unhappiness in relationships on men going to prison I don't understand that at all. Uh, uh, okay, so basically... The thing is, if men weren't in prison, they would still be unhappy with them. Yeah, like, uh, men can't win with fourth wave feminism. So it says, uh, of course, things happen during the... Okay, so basically, they talk about the advances in women's rights from a financial system and how women uh, it makes used to make 60% of a man's median salary to about 76% of it uh, uh, up until 1976, blah, blah, blah. But then it says, of course, things happen during the period in question that probably made American women less happy. Take, for example, the massive rise in incarceration incarceration rates among their actual potential male partners. This rise wouldn't have left traces in the male happiness data because prisoners were not included in the life satisfaction surveys. 20 years between 1980 and 2000 saw a five-fold increase uh, in the number of African-American men in jail leading to more black men behind bars in the U.S. than were enrolled in colleges and universities. Those kinds of statistics imply big changes in the marriage market. Although increased incarceration has affected African Americans more than others, even when all Americans are considered together, the rise in male incarceration between 1970 and 2000 has been held responsible for a 13% drop in U.S. marriage rates. The reduced pool of free men has also encouraged many women to accept marriage proposals from men they would not have other they would have otherwise rejected. This and really a, feels like a reach all around. An effect that has been shown to be sufficient to shift the economic advantage of marriage away from women and towards men. Um, they go on to talk about how long commutes bother women more than men and how house chores make women more depressed than men. <laughs> See, this study feels like in a lot of ways it has interesting data, but it's drawing weird conclusions. They're like too... Well, it's a Guardian ugly. article. It's, the, it's a Guardian. Bam, article. shots fired. Yes. Uh, uh, and, and they talk about the, the dual burden of like uh, how, you know, having to be at home and have, like they say, women still do a majority of the housework on top of having careers. Which they claim to be a, a big. This part of gun it, so. is so intense. Yes, it's out to get you today. So, all right. Uh, why? I, I do want to know why do you think? I don't want to say the Mindy Kaling specifically, but before we go, I just want to say why is there a Hollywood specific war on the concept of the traditional family? Again, like I think it's a cope. You know, like they're for Hollywood in general. Yeah. Why? Like tr because they're trying. Because a lot of people, they get sold a fairy tale, right? That part is true. Yes, that part is true. Yeah, they get sold a fairy tale, and then, you know, they hit 30s, 40s, and they the got... The wall is undefeated, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, they, <laughs> the 24-hour hour life cycle is also undefeated. Like, And they realize <laughs> that they couldn't have their cake, eat it to yeah. be a girl boss and have it all at the same time like there's just not enough time in the day yeah. like these like and honestly i blame this a lot on the parents because like that all this like uh, like what boomers love to tell us is like oh like my generation didn't get trophies for getting last place well your generation could no, you work a summer for, job like, yeah. part-time job pay for rent pay for like hanging out in life and pay for tuition so yeah now Blame the, uh, blame the government for insuring all those loans and having the college prices no, like, skyrocket. Do you know what I think some of it is? What? I think that the culture, we'll call Hollywood media, like hates the family unit because families are happier on average and like they profit off of loneliness, right? That's what I'm saying. I think that like they're able to sell lonelier people who have an income more goods. I think we're able to make lonely people watch more media because they don't have anyone to hang out with at night. Like if you yeah. think about like parents, like if you're a single person, right? If you go back to your apartment where maybe you have roommates or you live alone, like if you're not dating anyone because your career takes all your time, then you watch a movie at night, you watch YouTube, you like listen to whatever. <laughs> but when you have a like partner that partner expects you to spend some time with them and talk to them ask them how their day is going and you might talk about things that have happened and then if you add kids to the mix like can you imagine if you come home at five and you were like well i'm just gonna sit down and watch tv for three hours your spouse would be like heck no we have children they got to go to soccer right. practice go to bed we got to make dinner like when you have responsibilities 
you are spend less time consuming media and Hollywood doesn't profit off of that. And so misery, they need you to be more miserable. Misery loves company. Well, and like, uh, yeah. I, I don't want to make a generalization, but usually in my experience, like when I've been like through breakups. <laughs> Whoa, so exciting. When I've been through breakups, like my perpetually single friends have always like had the desire to like make me more apprehensive and like against my ex-partner that I wanted to be. Yeah. Like, you know, you Thank can't you. you can end things in like good terms. Like it is possible. Like sometimes like adults have adult problems that they don't work out. And usually my oh, no. friends that were in like long lasting relationships and that at the time had something that I you know like I wanted to emulate and wanted to have as well would have like more, you know, like well-rounded advice. And so, you know, I wouldn't exactly, I don't think this is a uh, mid decaling and sorry for to pick on you, sis, but you, you did this. Like, you did this to yourself. Yeah, for real. Um, I don't know if she, like, if you want to have like a loving marriage and children, if this is the advice to take, you know, I don't ask like, Workout advice from Lizzo's. You know what I'm saying? I don't blame you. Uh, I, I think some of it's also partly you tell the stories that you know, and if they're living non-traditional lifestyles that they can afford to through their the amount of money that they make, they tell non-traditional stories, and that just gets to be what fe what's fed to us. So let's do super chats. Okay, I think I lost some of them. We are uh, we are up at um, bad app. Ah, okay. Interesting, interesting, We're interesting. We're going to have to be careful. Uh, remember, there's a phrase yes. that we employ here. Uh, we, we don't want you to ever have to say anything you don't want to. So remember, repeat after me. If you don't want to read it, you say, bad app. I'm not reading that. Okay, bad app. I'm going to pass on this one. On bring back the, very <laughs> the first bring one. It's okay. It says bring back the sassy gay boys. <laughs> <laughs> or bring the sassy, the sassy gay boys back. I'm not who that's. Is that you guys? Who's I, I guess. Uh, and Ian, I and guess. And Ian on Friday. That would have been us. Yep. Is Ian back on Friday? Or is he coming uh, later this I week? I don't know if Ian. I, I will have to figure guys, that out. Guys, bombard Ian on Twitter and tell him you want to see him on PCC. That's what you, yes, that's what you do. Uh, Sebastian K says, "Freeze your uh, freeze you eggs, young lady, so you can have your forty cats. At, uh, so your forty cats can have something to eat later in life. That is funny. Damn. Also weird. <laughs> Damn. Um, I like cats well enough, but like, what bothers me about it is like, you're telling girls that like, ha want the instinct to want to have a family should be put off and." In a culture of like listen to your gut because often your gut tells you when something is wrong and creepy like I think that's bad advice to give mm -hmm. uh, bad app says I like my eggs fertilized <laughs> and scrambled <laughs> we'll keep Specific that in mind order. that's a that's a t that's a t-shirt if ever I've heard of one uh, bad app says Dane it's four o'clock take your BC What's the BC? I, don't know, dude. I think your birth control um, ah! <laughs> children come on you don't know <laughs> That app, I got you, which is a this horrifying is my, my, thought. My alarm sword sounds every episode at 4 p.m. because I have to do something at 4 p.m. You have another job? My, no, my birth control. Oh, oh, is that what it is all this time? Yep. yep. Uh, Gold Mecro says it's a self-correcting problem, thankfully. Do you think, do you think that's true? Do you think, uh, I mean, Tim makes the point quite often. He says he thinks the generations will become more conservative because the conservatives are the ones that are having children uh, and the liberals are, are yelling about climate change and, and then they'll eventually die off because they're not having kids. I don't know if I believe that because I believe that the power of social media and the push of neoliberal values is unprecedented in the media that I don't think you can get away from I think that. it's a combination I think there are people who are opting not to have kids and you'll I would be curious to see if we see a wave of articles later which is like because like fertilizing your egg or freezing your eggs isn't a guarantee that like when you go through IVF it'll work later yeah it just means you have high quality eggs theoretically on on site and actually it's better to freeze a fertilized egg so in some ways, are you asking 19-year-old girls to take their college boyfriend's sperm, yeah. have their parents freeze a fertilized zygote? Like, it doesn't make a lot of sense. But what I think is sad is, like, we should celebrate people who are... We should support the family unit and system in a lot you of ways. You get to... If that's true, his child support, if they don't stay together, has to be lessened by a certain amount every five years that she waits to have that kid. I know, seriously. Brett, that's a very for president. <laughs> okay. Like, as someone that has a master's degree, so every liberal in chat bow down, um, I, I literally, I think the giga chats are the world are people that go to trade school. 
Oh yeah, because like the dude, if you're, you can do now. best thing. If you're a plumber and an electrician, you're like raking it in. You have job security forever. Also, and like you are not in debt. Earlier in age, you're making more money. You can save <laughs> to buy a house or just travel or do whatever. There's that meme. It's, it's like, like insane that they look down upon these people. It's, it's, it's like insane. There's that meme. It's like this is Kyle. Kyle went to to a four year college to get a liberal arts degree. This is Mike. Mike went to trade school, and then this is this is Mike shutting off Kyle's power because like, he can't afford to pay his rent. I know I said this earlier, but like the idea that like one women started going to college one of the benefits was they were meeting men who were like climbing socioeconomically they were more likely to have a better job we know that's not true parents like if you want to meet a man who will be able to provide for you so you can have kids earlier in life like date someone who works in a trade this is the only but way they don't to want do to do that because they look down on them yeah which is garbage <coughs> and that's a garbage issue. that's an issue right now because they, they keep having this issue where like women are earning such to the point that they keep want to date men that are more financially yeah st- financially stable than them Jake's on them. They can't find them. No. Because also, they, they they have the idea that like when they get a college degree, they're actually smarter. So the idea is that like it's di- the thing that's difficult for women is to date someone who is like lower on the IQ scale than them. The dumbest- and that study is produced over time. Like that is something women struggle with. But it's actually stupid to go to college in a lot of ways. And I went to college <laughs> 100%. because you're putting yourself in debt. So it would actually be better in like. If you're smart enough to realize that a trade is good and do well at that trade, maybe start your own company one day, whatever, like it's actually not a marker. A college degree is not a marker of intelligence at all. It's a it's a it's a difference in values. What what each side values. Yeah. Overdress says, uh, they sent in twenty euros. Ooh, I agree with I agree with Dane. It is a cope. It is a cope. And yes, there is a ambulance needed. Mindy Wait. wants to feel good about her life decisions. This is a. Uh, disservice to all girls she could have been a role model for go Hannah Claire heart love you oh, I love you back this is so exciting and yes I totally agree I think that like honestly it's a conversation we should we direct it at women and it makes it so men can't have this conversation but I think if you are especially young men right now well, you I'm, sh- you I'm having have, this conversation today no no, no so but like I think of like <laughs> well like you guys especially because you're you're both like in your 30s and though like, I did wait to have I, I was going to do this t- subject on Friday and literally heck no to I'm have too like a, hyped <laughs> Uh, I think that part of it is we should also encourage men to talk about like, but I do want to have a family. I think having a family is good with the people they're dating. Thank you. Because I think women need men in their lives who are like, I don't think less of you if you want to become a mom. Like if you don't want to pursue a career, I actually respect you just as much because feminism teaches them that like in order to maintain your But men don't look down on women that do that. Only women women do. And so they need the alternative. You need to hear from men. You know, it's one of the best things about you know being raised by my 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 dad was a single dad for a long time like he was like yeah yeah you can do whatever you want i totally believe you could have any career in the world but i hope that you know that like it's it becomes harder to have becomes harder to have a child children later and like being a parent is extremely rewarding and fulfilling i would do it again a hundred times and i think that messaging is like really positive to tell both young men and women oh man i'm out of breath i'm ranting so much today i apologize uh f off says lady empowerment mostly hurts them i pay a maid to clean my house twice a month if i'm too lazy to cook for a week i hire a chef and give them my list it costs me less to hire two women than it does to date one. <laughs> oh my gosh I, i'm so curious about your bank account right is now this like andrew tate in disguise this is genius. Genius. are you revealing yourself no i mean but there is stuff that shows that like being a stay-at-home mom or even like a stay-at-home wife like that is considered they calculate it to be like an over one hundred and fifty thousand dollar position you work 90 hours a week like we forget that like we used to have a department of home economics because women did so much work and then we were like let's double the workforce by lying to you and saying it's better to be outside the home like thanks stalin the the economics never made sense they just pushed it anyways uh yeah stalin that guy started international women's day waffle sensei yeah do you remember when our contractor wished me a happy international Mm. women's day and then we learned that (laughs) uh waffle sensei says dave is correct on this one time (laughs) i've had enough uh i've I've had to end multiple relationships because the girls are taught to have not to have children or a life plan, but that they need to go into debt to figure out what they want in college. I yeah. think women have a hard time figuring out what they want because they are told they're not supposed to want the things they actually subconsciously that, yeah, want. That's right. Also, abolish generals. Excuse me? Abolish generals in college. Go straight oh, to yeah, yeah, yeah. Abolish. If you're going to mm. keep college for whatever reason, God forsake it. It just wastes get time. Get rid of generals. They do not need generals. Yeah, it's a total waste it helped of time. Me out. Really? Yeah. What did you like about it? Because I, I, I'm a man of many interests, so like I, I didn't know where I wanted to channel it. I know, sorry. But, but it it's helped. probably because you're actually good at a lot of stuff. Um, there you have it, Brett. 
The next one says, oh, let's roll very quiet. Okay, how through. about this? You can take generals if you can provide them with like a reasonable expla uh, explanation about what you want to do with your life. Listen, uh, if you're a gigantic giga chat like me, then sure, fine. fine. Unless if you're not, which you probably aren't, <laughs> then you know, like choose something. Okay, Bobcat, <laughs> I think is trying to target me. Everyone's agree we'd all be less mi miserable if they'd make a <laughs> Fast and Furious Eleven. Ah, so you tune in regularly, Bobcat. Bobcat, I see. you are you are so smart. I think you're you wrong, are, sir. You I have so to smart. agree. Uh, don't worry. I, I I scolded Hannah Claire uh, once that show went off the air. I went in and made sure that Tim and all of IRL knew that Hannah Claire's beliefs do not reflect the beliefs of Pop Culture Crisis or its affiliates. I don't need to represent anyone's belief. I stand firm. Ten Fast and Furious is too it's many. Not enough. Too it's many. Not enough. Okay, Wayward Soul says. In my opinion, a real, quote, girl boss doesn't get 50K of cosmetic surgery, then turn their face into a lizard. <laughs> hey, can't I argue with that. I think that's an excellent point. Can't argue with that. Mm, let's see. Jonathan Harris. Shh, shh, shh. I'm scrolling. I'm Don't rush help. me. Rush These her. men. Okay. I'm <laughs> just afraid because the, the, the format that I look at is different than Brett, so I'm afraid I'm skipping stuff. I want to make sure I read all your super chats. They're important to me. They actually are one of my favorite parts of the show. Yes. Okay. What I love Jonathan I Harris says, I will be telling my future children that college doesn't have to be a f the final answer. They can go to trade school to get a decent job and replace Gen Xers as they age out. Yeah. Totally true. And the Gen Xers will actually have money saved up because they got jo got those jobs early so they can actually retire. It just doesn't like makes like I understood when college like did actually help you enormously with your career. You like present your college degree and they're like, you are the head of the company now. Mm. But no, 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 no. That's not what happens now. Uh, I don't know what this one says. Bullet Turtle. Bullet Turtle. It says, uh, Bullet Turtle says, trade school is only good for some professions as someone who went to trade school for IT and now won't even get looked at without a bachelor's degree. Oh, interesting. Mm. I, I have heard that. And also, to me, that means that we should, like, delete the bachelor's degree. Like, I'm very sorry that's happening to you because a useless degree is seems more important because people probably don't understand your field at all thank you for the nuance uh ben corley says sent a friend a link to the previous show she said that hannah looks like what <laughs> looks like a gender bend of the homelander <laughs> from the boys uh now uses the moniker sexy homelander and all go. that said don't go to college yes don't go hey, to college anthony star anthony star plays homelander right that's a that's a good looking gender bend. i am a very handsome man you I are a very handsome man <laughs> at one time on the vlog i declared myself a male fashion icon uh you i think are. that might still stand my family can't stand the fact because since i got I'm the first master's degree in the in the family they're like i have younger nephews and they're like why don't you teach about the value about going to college and i'm constantly like don't do it that Boo, like down right. boat. Think Pull about it. the ladder up behind you. Why don't you look? Name? I th I love academia in a lot of ways because I like learning and I can understand where that at one point in our history was a positive thing. It's just that it's become about commercialization and it just leads to a lot of debt and like regret and confusion for most people. I like to party too, but it's not worth it. F off says I'm not that rich. I'm a goldsmith. That is super cool. That is I so awesome. Play with gold and diamonds. Made cost two hundred dollars a month. Chef one hundred for four hours of cooking. I can get meal preps for two weeks uh, with that. It's not bank uh, bank breaking. It saves me so I can earn more. It saves me time so Legend. I can earn more. That's what I've heard about a lot of people like, when they realize they're making enough to like be able to like uh, pay for house cleaners and stuff. Like yep. it's ultimately for your own time. Yep. Uh, that's super cool, dude. I've got to do that. Also, like goldsmith. Whoa. Uh, Rustin Noel says, I would give up my career in a second for my daughter. Being a father is so much more fulfilling. Yes, more mm -hmm. of this in the chat, please. Uh, Thousand Foot Deep End says, <laughs> Lennon started International Women's Day not stolen. Brett, got, yeah, you've been fact-checked right in the I face. I've been fact-checked. Thank you. And real, oh my gosh, it's not scrolling for me. Fulani? Real Fulani. Hold on one second. Real Fulani says, as a single dad who is a carpenter, I both resemble and relate to what Hannah said about how tradesmen are viewed. Oh my God. It's yeah, so true. Absolutely. But to me, I so for a little while I worked in real estate and I worked with a lot of tradesmen and carpenters. And like, first off, they're great. And second off, like they often make their own hours. Like if they're like, like I remember one of them who was like, oh yeah, my wife like wants to have lunch today. So like I'm going to work here and I'm going to work there and then I'm going to go have lunch with her. Like 
I don't understand. I, I had a friend. I, I lived with a kid for a while that uh, he he was both his grand his, his uncle was a carpenter and his dad was an electrician and he had he could do both. He was <laughs> certified in both, but he loved doing the carpentry work more because it appealed more to his creative side. But the electrician side, he made more money doing. Mm -hmm. But he did them interchangeably. Like he took time. Do whatever he wants. Yeah, it was, it's like, and he was like the of all my friends, he seemed like he was the happiest. Yeah, I think. The other part is like college is a feeder for people who need like corporate structure. They need someone else to tell them where they're going next. Whereas like I really appreciate people who can like hustle and figure it out. Mm. Bradley Allen says Hannah has a stronger jawline than me, but she has. Mm, I don't want to read the rest. She's of not going to read the rest of that one, guys. Well, all right. I do have a very square head. <laughs> all right. We're going to move on to pod luck. We are going to do pod luck. And the first thing we are going to do before we get there is we're going to talk about rust. Uh, the rust. Uh, thank you. The Rust information is in, and basically what they said is that he had to have pulled the trigger. Alec Baldwin had to have pulled as if I knew as it. if we as if we thought anything differently, right? Like like did anybody think Dude, that I, and it just and the gun just went off? I don't know. I gave him the benefit of the doubt. I, why? I don't know. I I literally don't know why. I just like I, I couldn't in my mind it was like why would he be so malicious as to like literally murder a I mean not literally well, I don't, that, murder a woman like in cold blood in front of people. That's huh? so dumb. So it says the FBI recently released a forensics report which found that the gun used on the set couldn't have been fired unless the person handling it pulled the trigger. The report, which was tamed by ABC News, explained that the conclusion was derived from accidental discharge testing using the exact type of gun used on the set. The 45 caliber Colt uh, single action revolver reportedly could not be made to fire without a pull of the trigger. If the hammer was placed in quarter or half cock positions, the firearm also could not be made to fire without pulling the trigger if the hammer was fully cocked. Fully cocked. Alec Baldwin has not publicly addressed the forensic findings as, as of the writing of this article. In the aftermath of Helena Hutchins' death, the actor spoken about the situation on multiple occasions. He denied rumors that he was not complying with the investigation. There was all the stuff with his phone uh, and not wanting to turn over his phone. When explaining why he was speaking out after the Rust tragedy during a lengthy interview, the actor revoked the investigation. While acknowledging that it could take time, he stated that he couldn't wait for the process and wanted to share his side of the story. Legal arbitration also claimed that Baldwin didn't even know a live round had been shot until he was shown the bullet. They found seven live rounds amongst 500, li uh, 500 rounds of uh, dummy am or uh, prop ammunition. Mm -hmm. That's insane uh, and just pure negligence. They got fined. Do you think it's negligence on the prop master's fault or on uh, Alec Baldwin? Or it, do they both have a This is top down. There was negligence, in my opinion. Uh, on all levels of this production it seemed horribly put together. Uh, the, and here's the other thing that's crazy. You know what the max fine was? It's like $136,000, which for a Hollywood production, not union or not, is like a rounding error. Mm -hmm. This is the, I mean, this is a death on set. You don't get more serious than that. And it gets stuck with a $136,000 fine. That's the value of life over there. Apparently. That's crazy. Uh, do you think that he would be he, he will be held liable? Do you think there's any Have chance they he spends filed a day criminal in, charges no, against not him? Yet. Do you think there's any chance this dude spends a day in jail? Um, I kind of think not. I feel like they'll end up maybe offering him probation or something like that. I mean, even I don't even think they bring it to there's trial. There's not enough. Yeah, I mean, I think they might have to bring it to trial because there is a fair amount of media attention that got brought to this. They're going to let him. They can't pretend. They're going to let him get sued into oblivion. I bet. Her, her family filed a wrongful death suit. So right? did uh, another person on that set file. Like he, a bunch of people have come out of the. You mentioned it earlier. We were talking about the the other person who sued because they said he was playing Russian, Russian roulette. roulette uh, insane. On the set, which I think that they. I think that was supposed to be hyperbole. I, I think they're like. The I, I like the actually, idea that it wasn't, and yeah. he's just like, I don't even care about this. At this point, like, I can't believe that it's hyperbole because, like, if again, like, if, if he's like insane enough to like pull a trigger in front of people and kill a woman in cold blood, I don't, I don't think he is like savvy enough to not play Russian roulette. Like, the uh, the the other thing is like he's a very much an anti-gun dude, which is hilarious. I, it's except always, his wasn't he on like his high school rifle team? Yes. Uh, so he's once he got to Hollywood, he was like, on. just kidding, I don't like guns because he knows the party line. The same thing is true of <sighs> oh of Eminem in, in the song We as Americans. It's like the most pro two A song ever, and he's he became an anti-gun person. And M just, I decided, I, like, my theory is that he just, like, was like, I'm losing fame. How do I get back in the media? 
I'm going to attack Donald Trump. Yeah. You know, like, basically. oh, creative idea. How so, did that go for you? So it says Helena Hutchins' family hit him with another lawsuit, which included Rust Armor, Hannah Gutierrez Reed, and assistant director Dave Halls. Hannah Gutierrez Reed is no longer working as like a prop master. She's now like running security for a, for like a, a, tattoo parlor if I remember correctly but she comes from a family like her dad was an armorer uh, so you'd think that she would know better but this is one of those cases where I just kind of disconnected because I knew I in my heart of hearts I don't think I, I knew that he wasn't going to face criminal charges if he does I will be absolutely shocked I think that they end up uh, with legal fees and then a whole bunch of uh, hopefully it causes his insurance to go because it was his production company that made this movie hopefully he just never gets to make another movie again yeah, I mean, I just don't. Ooh, look at these Thank lights! You. I don't know why, but every time this happens, it's just like so great. Yeah. Um, I hope you guys enjoy it as much as we do. The thing about Alec Baldwin is, I feel like there will never be enough consequences. Like, I feel like in some ways, he's always going to sort of have the option to skate out of mm-hmm. whatever's going on. And you know, I don't think him he, and Ezra Miller can be out on a like. Somebody should but Photoshop if you told that. me that Alec Baldwin afterwards broke into someone's house, I'd be like, seems what is happening? Oh, it's the crisis party. I'm sorry. <laughs> so much to do all at once. Um, I, I just think that Alec Baldwin is slowly trying to be like he and uh, his wife just announced that they are expecting their, I think, seventh eighth, or eighth seventh child. Eighth. Damn. And they got like a People magazine feature. Like, why are we holding these people up when... He is actually he shot someone. At this point, he felt no guilt. It seems crazy. I mean, in some ways, like again, if it really were a workplace accident, like that would be so tragic. But it just seems like he has so much responsibility because he wasn't just an actor, but he was a producer. He was yep. so involved in the movie, and to be like, but we're moving on, ta da! Like nothing, no lawsuits are settled, no crime cr- crimes have been brought. You know. It just seems so callous. At this point, like I bet the defense is gonna be like, "Listen, the times pass. He feels so bad." About Are we still it. talking about this? Yeah, yeah. That's gonna be Alec Baldwin's response. One hundred percent. Also, I want to know, like, uh, okay. But J.K. Rowling is still getting <laughs> asked about her turf comments, like four years later. I also want to know if, like, I'm trying to picture this happening. Like, okay, it doesn't have to be a gun on set. A gun, a gun on this set is just a particular tool of the trade, right? I want to imagine like a dude. Uh, driving a caterpillar and like jokingly picks up a coworker and a guy dies getting uh, s- uh, squashed by a cat uh, uh, on like a, a work site. Or, or do you know what I'm saying? Like no. I'm I'm trying to picture any type of work environment, not Hollywood, where something like this would happen. Would criminal charges be brought against someone? I mean, it's obviously, I think it, I think the answer is obviously yeah. Yeah. Like even if it wasn't intentional, a normal human being would go to jail for this or there would be like i mean i i don't want to uh ding new mexico too much like i haven't followed the case so intensely i know they are investigating it but like there would be repercussions like only alec baldwin gets to skate off into the sunset and be like but i'm having another kid perhaps another movie like that's gonna be the problem when he announces that he has another movie in the works it's gonna be like what the heck man you left this mess behind over here and he's gonna be like never mind are we still talking about this $136,793 $136,793 is the ma- maximum penalty on the fines. Um, Do we feel the, like that's enough? From the Occupational Health and Safety Bureau of New Mexico, uh, a willful serious citation was issued to the company, and it carries that amount. Uh, and they have uh, 15 days to pay it or uh, have when to— When was it issued? Uh, that would have been—this article was, I believe, just the other day. Uh, was one day ago. So he has 15 days from, like, probably the end of last week. I don't know. And then do you think when they, if they ever file charges against him, he's going to be like, but I paid the fine. Like, why are you still punishing me? Well, that's, that's what it is, right? New, uh, BP spills a bunch of oil and you pay the fine and everything's fine. But it's, BP mm. doesn't have a, there's no way to charge them criminally. Like Alec Baldwin held the gun, pointed it and caused the death and serious injury of two people on set. Like that is, I'm not saying oil spills aren't serious, but like he should be at least facing manslaughter. Like even if he gets acquitted, which if there's evidence to prove that fine, but like it does seem like he has just sort of like he yeah, did that like did. he like retreated to New Ooh. Hampshire for a minute and then he was like, well, moving on. I, I got believe- I got a hot take. Okay. Ooh, I got a hot take. But I do be- I don't believe that when I believe it was Michael Madsen who shot uh, uh, Brandon Lee on the set of The Crow. And I don't believe any charges were filed against him. But what's different is that in the aftermath of that incident, 
Michael Madsen stopped acting for like a year and a half or two years out of sheer guilt for what he felt. Well, I can't so. imagine and, what that's like. And like nobody can say that Baldwin has showed anything short, anything close to like. And like I said, when Michael Madsen did it again, if somebody can correct me if I'm wrong about that, I believe it was Michael Madsen. He felt guilty, even if it wasn't his fault, even if he couldn't have known that the gun was loaded, uh, the that the prop would uh, misfire that way. Guilt is a natural reaction. The fact that Baldwin vehemently denies any such thing is weird. Mm -hmm. Listen, we're about to hit like uh, politics o'clock in terms of the calendar. And oh gosh, usually so when nice. that happens, uh, both, both parties like to have a, like a story like right in their pocket in case they need someone to take the heat off of, of someone. So you think they, they charge him just as a distraction? They're pu I think that they may be putting just enough evidence out there towards the point where like they ever need to revive this story. It's like, well, they can't shot fire. The, the gun couldn't have fired itself. So we need to pull the trigger. Everyone talk about this guy. Like, don't look at what else. See, Everything I wonder else is if it's going to be here. the opposite. Like, because all the midterm election stuff is going to get so intense. Like, he's going to be able to more effectively slip under the radar. He's going to be like... Oh, yeah, those politics, though, am I right? Whereas, like, if it weren't election year, we might be following this more intentionally. Good God, Levin. But it usually is the stupider story covering for the most important thing. Yeah. And, like, while this isn't stupid, I mean, like... But it's it's very bread and circus. As yeah. far but as normally, if it weren't an election year... I mean, the other thing is, like, uh, Uvalde happened. Like, there have been yeah. some other gun violence-related things that sort of, like, overshadow this and... You know, they might as well. But if those things hadn't happened, this story would have stayed more mainstream for a while. I mean, to have like a random actor who has shot someone and then we just wait to figure out if anything's going to happen. Like, that is kind of crazy. I mean, that's clearly the strat from them. It's Seems like, wild. talk about other things. Do we need right. some super chats? Uh, nope, we're gonna we're gonna get through the. the oh yeah, it's podlic. We are in uh, guys. I, I'm at, I don't know the structure. This is a okay. This is a funny one. So they're they're ruling a bunch of people out for James Bond, and Hannah Claire loves to talk about James Bond. Well, she does. Okay, for about a casting James Bond. The thing is, for a while we were only we were always on YouTube, but we weren't live. And we were not live. We would occasionally play this game that I felt bad for our Spotify or Apple Podcast listeners because it involves being like, who do you think would be the best in this role, which often involves looking at them yes so it was a completely visual game that we played in a very audio format i believe that killian murphy has his eyes are too dead to play james bond i, I believe think that killian idris, murphy could do anything i believe that idris alba is too old to play james bond though i do think he would have been fa fantastic at it when he was younger have you seen peaky blinders i have not watched it yet if you watch peaky blinders you would think killian murphy would be james it's bond. not james bond so you agree with me I mean, he's so badass in that show. Killian though, Murphy could do it. I also think we could do with like a slightly. He's a okay, bulk up. One of the things he all, Brett always says to me is like, Killian Murphy looks like he's going to be evil. Like he just looks he like. Look, he would be a great Bond villain. I think he would be a good Bond. We need a slightly like, you know how Batman's been doing like the slightly anti-hero Batman. Like he's a loner in the tower and whatever else. Right. Like I think Killian Murphy could bring sort of that like loner energy to James Bond in a really successful way. I don't understand why you're fighting this, Brett. Dude, he rules in Peaky Blinders. He's like the ultimate Giga Chat. Like. So, so the latest rumor is that uh, in some way, part in some ways, part of this is very much true, which is basically that Bond producers are looking for a a younger Bond, someone probably in their 30s. At the end of the day, they want someone who will be Bond for the next three movies. That was exactly the Killian argument Murphy. I gave. Killian Murphy. He is not. Uh, I believe he's in his 40s now. Or he's well, a, I a, accept a, that. Yeah, I'm still good with it. So I don't the, the point is, is the number one person to come out of this is said that, that rules out Idris Elba that rules out Henry Cavill that rules out Tom Hardy uh, and, and they're gonna make it Tom Holland I, no I, like, I oh think God. they're I think they're paving the way for uh, reggae Jean Page uh, and Who what's is funny that? is it's, he's uh, he's from Bridgerton and he was in Boo, uh, the, he was Bridgerton in but okay so here's the it's thing old lady the, I remember this I, I remember reading this thing and I have no idea if this was true but I remember when the FBI was like re uh, was was like rewriting their manual on uh, for their like whatever their official uh, side like uh, sidearm would be uh, for the FBI they wrote out the the specification so specifically that it only could have fit two models it would have been like a, a sig p320 or a, a Glock. Uh, of some sort, like based on what the re what the requirements were for the pistol in the handbook, it feels like they're like literally like we needed to be this and we needed to be this and we needed to be this, and they're literally just trying to whittle it down mm -hmm. to one person that they already want to play the role, mm -hmm. uh, and that's what they're doing. And I, and I do think that Reggae Jean Page mm -hmm. would not be if we have to race or race swap Bond. He's not the worst choice you could make. Killian Murphy. That's only. an interesting. That is a good strategy. Being like, well, we want to go this direction, so eventually you're just willing yeah. down. You're so he, it can't be this yeah, guy. It can't be that guy. I can't like be, that. 
uh, like I, I would prefer if it was Henry Cavill. If he could, if Henry Cavill didn't look like such a beefcake, he'd have to lose <laughs> he'd have to lose some of the muscle mass. Uh, but uh, in general, uh, I do think that that's what they're going to go here. And I do like to point out that I was right all along that they would have never chose Idris Elba uh, yeah. based on it. But he again, he like so bad like Killian Murphy, would make a fantastic Bond villain. I just watched Hobbs and Shaw again the other night. I'm not even ashamed to say it. Love that movie. He would. He was a great Bond villain in that, or he's like a Bond esque villain in that. He's like a superhero, a uh, super villain. He would be great for for a, a new Bond. I just think like Bond in my head, he's like forty, like because like part of the character. Well, they're gonna go younger. So uh, I mean, Daniel Craig when he started was right as he became a double O, which means he'd be in your uh, late twenties, early thirties. Pero por qué is what I'm saying because like in my mind, like the whole thing is that. You know, like, he's a little worn. He's like, Bond, this is your last mission. You're a loose cannon. Like, that's kind of like part of the shtick. So it says, so if the rumor is true and the next James Bond will be in their 30s, this leaves (laughs) Bridgerton star Reggae Jean Page in the mix. Uh, His odds have been high for some time now, even though his co-stars are weighing in on the potential casting. And I know that the gray man, like the the Russo brothers, like, we support Reggae Jean Page's James Bond. I'm like, yeah, because you're going to have him around for two more of your movies. You want the cross promotion or, you know, you want the the status. We have nothing to gain from this. We just happen to also think it's a good idea. You know how hard it is to be a double O of color? (laughs) Hey, bro. See, that's how they lose me. I, I am not somebody who wants them to just do this stuff blindly i get a lot of crap because the the like the the race swapping didn't always bother me but if they actually said that i would kick the dvd out a window or my tv i think we should all agree killing murphy is the only option no andrew tate (laughs) bond hanks john bond drives a bugatti and chet hanks is the the super hell yeah i i disagree so uh, uh, I, it will be interesting to see. Uh, Tom Holland isn't even out of the realm of possibility. Oh, that's what oh. I mean. They're going to be like, look what happened with that. I think he's too small. Former no vampire he's in small. Batman. He's too small. No, no but way. it's like, it's like, what's his face? He was like, no, I'm not going to work out for Batman. Whose name I can't remember right now. Uh, from Twilight. Yes. Uh, Robert Pattinson. Robert Pattinson. Uh, that's going to be like, he had kind of a life, needs some, some like sun looks. At least this kid looks athletic. Like he was like uh, on the track team. No way. I, I look I Tom agree Holland you. Is, as has, you guys know I only advocate for killing a Murphy being being Bond I don't understand why this is even a conversation <laughs> that we're having it is so clearly the right answer I respect Brett's arguments but I ultimately think we can agree it should be that guy I, I don't know where else they go where else they go with it I, I love uh, a lady James it, Bond don't James Zena Bond <laughs> I think I'd rather that than uh, this no. Jane Bond sort of got, don't do like it's he, his daughter. You know what? And the funny thing is, they made a Winona Earp show, so there, it's not even outside the realm of possibility. I don't even know what that means. Winona Earp. That's a show based on like it's it's Wyatt Earp's daughter or something. I I never watched it, but it was very popular. There are too many pop culture references here. I'm sorry, Dan. We cut you off. I think that I I would like a based chick. I would prefer than Tom Holland. Like Tom Holland looks like a child. Like I I, I cannot Ooh. have yeah, he him has such like, a baby face. Shake it, not stir. Get out, <laughs> Killian Murphy. Killian Murphy. <laughs> Nope, nope, nope. I can't. What about what about Robert Pattinson? No, he's already doing Batman. Let him be both. No. Let him be both. No, he made his decision. He's got to stick with it. I, I, I make this argument because I, I was listening to a, review, uh, an, a particularly favorite m- review I, I had for the movie Tenet, which we talk about how it's a it's a good uh, friendship. He talks about it's a good friendship film. It's a horrible science fiction film, meaning the sci-fi elements of Tenet make no sense whatsoever. But uh, Joe, D- Joel, Joel David Washington, Denzel Washington's son, who sounds ch- literally just like him, uh, him and Robert Pattinson's characters like become friends in this movie. And it's a great like so you get to see Robert Pattinson as like a sci-fi ish spy. I think he could do the role. I do. Dude, if is Silly Murphy bu- uh, buffed up. I beat hella down. He could totally do it. He has to buff up, though. Sure, he can nope. do it. I believe in him. No, nope. he He'll eat rules. a bunch of protein. He, he would rules. rock. Thank you. Brett's outvoted. Rather, Brett's would, voted off the island. It's my show I now. I would rather Tom Hardy. <laughs> Dane, I would like to invite oh, you. Oh, I, I like Tom Hardy more. Dane, too. I'd like to invite you to be on my pop culture broadcast tomorrow. Uh, Brett just, won't be here. I'll just, be Mario. Mario, I guess. Uh, <laughs> like I, the, I, I, I think Tom. I would rather have Tom Hardy. But if I had to pick out of all of them, I would have taken. Uh, I would have taken Robert Pattinson or. Who was the other one before? I was on the Idris Killing train Murphy. until yeah. he. I realized how old he is. No offense, bro. You look great. Killing Murphy uh, only. How well, many times do I have to say this? Appa- infinite times, apparently. <laughs> and I will. I'm, ca- I'm dedicated to this. 
I'm looking up this name. It's not an actor that. Uh, Brett's derailing oh, the show. From, I'm from da- honestly, I'm down. If he get, if he gets jacked, I'm down. But like, I like Tom Hardy more. Oh. Tom Hardy rules. Don't you like Tom Hardy? I don't know a lot about him. I'm pretty committed to this. this He's thing. also. On, do you see Peaky Blinders? Yeah. He's like the. Well, I've seen the first season. The Jewish mobster guy. Oh, okay. Okay, so Jack Bannon. Okay, we'll, we'll talk about that in Super Chats. All right, we're gonna we're gonna move on and we're gonna talk about uh, Big <laughs> Big Time Rush. If you never thought, I never thought I'd talk about Big Time Rush either. Big Time Rush compared to Lizzo and Beyonce over supposedly ableist. Didn't song. they have like a Nickelodeon TV show? Is that who this is? That's uh, Ma- uh, Mary would know this. I I, I do not know this. So basically, uh, the idea here is you're literally not allowed to use any words anymore. Words are banned. Mm-hmm. Words are banned. Noted. It says Big Time Rush is in big time trouble, <laughs> at least on Twitter, because users are outraged over the title of an old song, which some are labeling as ableist. You know what we should this do? This makes me crazy because it's like you can't go back in time and be mad about something you didn't catch then. If it wasn't offensive then, we have to let some things go. I understand that culture shifts, so it has to work in reverse, right? Uh... Yeah, I, I just... Like, you can't be like, oh, we're mad about it now. Like, you weren't mad then, and this song is even on the radio right now, unless there's something I'm missing. So they're, they're invoking... They're just digging up being irritated. Yeah. I apologize. So it says, here's the deal. The one-time boy band of the 2010s has recently reunited to put out new music, and one of their fan-favorite vault songs that they were itching to release is called Paralyzed. You can see where this is going, ladies and gentlemen, which has been leaked before but never officially included on an album. Now they're saying that they're going to do it for real and have been teasing their fans with, uh, with, uh, with, with, wait, with when? And, uh, and under what circumstances they will do it. That's horribly written. Sorry, I suck at reading. We're so happy to see What is it? Every- are, you, are you bad at reading or is it horribly written? Both of them. Mm. Uno reverse. No reverse. Uh, <laughs> we're so happy to see that everyone across the globe are now able to enjoy all our music. But the real question: How badly do you want us to release "Paralyzed"? Well, how could you say such a thing when there's actual paralyzed people in the world? I ask you. Uh, on Saturday, they tweeted this, that statement. Says, but the real question is: How how, how badly do you want us to release "Paralyzed"? This incur- they they encourage their followers to get paralyzed. <laughs> Trending before to get paralyzed, trending before they put it out, but so far haven't. The track's only on SoundCloud in an unofficial capacity. If you listen to the lyrics, it's a fairly straightforward, seemingly innocuous song about a girl who's got the boy stunned and frozen, aka paralyzed. Well, you can't say that anymore. Incredible. Because paralyzed, uh, aka paralyzed, because of how attractive she is. Essentially, they're smin. Well, why didn't you call it that? Guys, breaking Should... news. Words have multiple meanings. I know, right? Also, like... What? Uh, so I know. With the, with the spaz controversy with Lizzo and Be- uh, Beyonce, it was like, that's cerebral palsy, and that's yep. which I never thought it was, and I don't think most people with cerebral palsy agree, but like they're like, it's a slur for this specific disease. Like, being paralyzed could happen for a number of reasons, and I also don't understand. Like, are you saying it's a slur? Should doctors also stop, stop using it? Uh, uh, but it, mm. it doesn't stop there. This isn't just of course ableism. It doesn't stop there. It's racism too, because yes, <laughs> some argue the song in general. Well, is to initial- me, that says like their are their initial outrage wasn't strong enough, so they got to couple it up with something that's, else. So you can't argue with them. That's what they're doing. Some argue that the song in general is an issue and offensive to paralyzed people. Incredible. If I wish someone who was actually paralysis was allowed to weigh in on this and have their own opinion. <clears throat> And it's here that Bay and Liz are getting roped in with accusations of racism f- uh, flying about. Uh, I said Bay, right? Yeah, Beyonce. Uh, B, not Bay. Uh, hop in the uh, uh, hop into the Lizzo and Beyonce trend right now, and you'll see all the discourse going on. Basically, some say that they uh, that those who were up in arms over the female artists using the word "spaz" in their songs demanded they remove it. Should be should be saying the same about Big Time Rush. So it's because. Big Time Rush is white. I hope Big Time Rush does not feed into this and they don't do anything. Uh, this is like this is so weak. So, so the some of the ableist community and uh, and or allies net. Uh, Brett's having a hard time, guys. Allies is, is like the 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 people in the in whatever community you're talking about are very are rarely worse than the people who call themselves allies who are there to be offended on your behalf. For everything. Allies is on the level of like male feminists. Yes. Uh, be very afraid. Yeah, mm-hmm. for sure. Uh, they're actually just racist because they made a big stink when two black women innocently used the term, uh, which was popular and in regular use in the pre-2010s, frankly. But when a bunch of white, white passing dudes are more on the nose, they seem to be crickets in terms of indignation. May- or maybe it's because nobody gives a crap about big time rush anymore. And also, people still like, care about this Beyonce idea of Lizzo. like 
you're paralyzed out of like love or attraction or whatever like that's already existed it's not even like a slur like i don't i don't understand why we are making this into something it's not when like there are probably actual causes you could pour your energy into like yeah. you guys just want to have a viral tweet i get it i get it it's fun to be famous on the internet i suppose well, but it's not meaningful woke people are trolls that don't enjoy laughter because like all they, they are do, the unhappiest people on the planet. Yeah, but like far. they're trolls because all they do essentially is trolling campaigns where it's like, actually, this is offensive. Ha ha ha. And like everyone just keeps falling for it. But the sad thing about them is like at least trolls are dignified enough to like laugh at the end. We had they the, just keep staying mad like losers. We had the thing. There's a uh, somebody like some tr uh, TikToker the other day was talking about like canceling Metallica, and this TikToker has an actual series called Your Problematic Faves, and it's just her like talking about things people like and why they're bad. Can you say that again? They're, your problematic what? Your problematic faves, like your favorite people, the things but, that you like yeah. that are problematic. But it's uh, it's like all Yikes. musicians and why they're bad. So that's that's a whole form of currency now. So uh, the madness never ends. So I say we just get the super chats because people uh, that care about stuff like this are frankly going kind of nuts. It's just like I kind of got the first two. I didn't agree with them, but this one is like reaching for straws. Anyways, uh, Mary's number one fan in the entire universe. Bad app says, can Mary stay on vacation? <laughs> Bad app, we know you miss her. She'll be back soon. She will Hang be back on. Soon. It's OK. Uh, let's see. Mary Rose. Yeah, I miss Mary. Uh, Thousand Foot Deep End <laughs> says, this is the second time I've had to correct y'all on International Women's Day. Tisk tisk. only joking. IWD is trash. I'm a woman, so I get to say so. Well, love I, the show, y'all. Hey, thanks for chiming in. I feel like Thousand Foot Deep End's been, for a while, been I, here for a while. I get Lennon and Stalin in that story mixed up But now I doubt myself because like now it's Lennon who started it, not Stalin. Because yes. Brett said Stalin and Stalin is wrong. Yes. Uh, I apologize. <laughs> Brett, leading us astray. You can't be our class history teacher. I am fake news, apparently. Mm, confirmed. Do you call yourself that, like, on the street? I, I need a shirt. You're like, it's me. News. I am fake news. I am the fake news. Oh, my gosh. That's so funny. Hold on. Uh, Jonathan Harris says, what, how do you say this? Ray J. P Jean, Jean Page? Uh, uh, I think you're, there's two up from there. The seven oh, sorry. Rounds. Mine, like, auto-scrolled a second mm. ago. Guys, this is why you need Mary. She is, like, more on the ball than I am. I absolutely have no idea how to find these super chats. That happened to me on Friday. It was so annoying. It just keeps, like, scrolling down. It gets down. stuck or something. Yeah. Wait, which one? Are Seven live rounds versus the hundreds of blanks? Mm. Nah, there's got to be something criminal going on. Though he's famous, so he'll probably get a slap on the wrist. Yeah, yep, it's crazy. That's absolutely what's going to happen. Thank you. Uh, Waffle well, Sensei says, "Should we should should we forgive Alec if his name if he names his new child after Helena?" That's the kind of that's evil the thing. Oh like, I'm afraid he will, yeah. and that's like kind of sick. Like, pay for her kid to have. Uh, I mean, nothing will make up for losing his mom, but like, if you tried to make it okay by naming your kid after her, even though you have a wrongful death suit in the work, like that's crazy. Ugh. I can't imagine being her family. Like, it must feel horrible to have had, for initially had all this, like, media support behind you, and then it sort of dwindles away. Yep. Um, let's see. Jonathan Harris. Stop rushing me. <laughs> Is it, what's the equivalent to mansplaining, but it's, like, pressuring me to go quicker? Man's speeding. Man rushing. Man rushing. <laughs> okay. Reggie Jean Page as, oh, this is Jonathan Harris. Uh, Reggie Jean Page as Bond, but Idris Elba as the villain would probably be a great Bond movie. Yeah, they could do that if they don't make it about the fact that he, if there isn't suddenly talking about James Bond suddenly being black and that being an element of and the story. Struck. It had it makes no sense in the context of that story. Leave it out. Just let Bond be Bond. Don't change anything else. He better not be some weird simp. He better be having sex with tons of women. While doing his spine. Oh, you're not open to a homosexual bond. No, I'm Ooh. not. It is too. Uh, that is. Look, they like. There was a, a thing. Look, I. There, there. There's like a panel in a comic coming up recently where bond, uh, where Batman is bisexual. <laughs> okay. I don't know how accurate it is. If it's just one panel, if he's undercover, I don't know if it's serious. Uh, if he's or, undercover, or if, or if excuse me. Well, like he could be trying to get information he's out of to somebody. Get, he's gonna honey trot, honey pot someone. That's that's a plausible thing to think oh, about. Lord. I'm saying I didn't look that far into it, but I do know that if they do do that, they're coming for the things you love. They they're coming for all of the aspects of your society that held cultural meaning before. And there's no reason to not just create a new character then. No. Why not Andrew Tate? He's a kickboxing world champion. I think he's like British. 
And like he drives a Bugatti. I mean, uh, he was like, "Hey, bro, do you got a Bugatti?" As you guys know, I stand by Killing Murphy. It's uh, the only answer. Well, then you need to read the next one. Okay, Boot the Snoot says I had to Google Killian Murphy, and upon review, he looks a little bit too creepy to be James Bond, but he would make a great villain. You guys, I I like respect this counterpoint, but I would argue we should have a slightly anti-hero, moody James Bond, and this Daniel guy is Craig the one was to do it. plenty moody as Bond, but he's too shiny and perfect. Like he needs to he be is not gritty. Perfect. I shiny think shiny and perfect. Yeah, he's like I don't know. He always looks like he's been waxed to me. Like that much know. is true. Okay, Thousand Foot Deep End says, look up Jack Bannon for the next Bond. Okay, Thoughts? I, Brett was doing this. Yes. It was happening live, Thousand Foot he Deep looks, End. He uh, looks, I mean, 91, so how old would that make him? To, it's so he's, 31. So he's 31. Yes. I mean, that's very early. I mean, he looks too clean cut, like, uh, or too skinny. Like, he'd have to put... I Hell like, no! He'd have to put on a lot of muscle, Hell but I think he could be okay. No. I'm liking these broody shots where no he way, looks dude. like he's frowning. No, not now. No way. way. Come yeah. on. Maybe Bond's dorky younger brother. For real, that gets bullied into being a villain. <laughs> I don't know. Just I'm I'm really vibing on Killian Murphy. I don't know how many times I have to say it until it happens. But Killian Murphy looks like he looks like devious, like with his face. This That's guy, what I mean. Like you'd be afraid of him as a James Bond. You'd be like, he's about to go rogue at any point. Who I gave really you my like? conditions. If he gets jacked, I you know what? Fine. Okay, Bring in. back Pierce Brosnan for one more film. Hell no. Uh, pass. All right. There's a uh, uh, couple more. Okay. Uh, Bad App says, fun fact, I bleached my hair like Mary today. I knew you were obsessed with her. No uh, one comments this much to talk to anyone except Bad App and Mary. He's yeah. her number one fan. What about David Tennant as James Bond? Who's he? Too old. He's played Doctor Who. Brett, when we get to the 200th episode of this, will you bleach your hair to match Mary? I will not do that. Why not? How many super, or how many crisis parties would we have to have in a row for you to bleach your hair? The ones that Dude, do. Uh, what? No. What? David Tennant? No. No? Hell no. Too skinny. Too dorky looking. Love David Tennant though as an actor. Uh, next super chat. No. Oh, I don't know how many crisis parties. We'd have to we'd have ten. to figure that out. If we get ten in a row one day, you go bleach your hair, yes? <gasps> we're, we're gonna no, get that temporary eventually. Dot. We can temporary dot. You'll temporarily What's bleach your right? hair. What? That'll happen sooner than you think. <laughs> uh, ten crisis parties in I'm a day. He already said it here. I'm not committing to it. 15. I love it. 10 crisis parties in a day. 20. 10. Where's the 10? You already said 10. You already said 10. 20. 15. Where's the 10? Uh, we might go with 15, but 10 is probably the answer. Okay. Jonathan Harris says, a gay James Bond with a flow bro as the villain. Who's a flow bro? Uh, I want the bad guy to be a crypto bro. Who's like, <laughs> That'd be awesome. What's a flow bro? I don't know what a flow bro Andrew is. Tate. Uh, like, I want the bad guy to be you a guy. You want any excuse to have Andrew Tate involved? Dude, all science portals. I want, I want a thing where it's just a crypto bro telling you to invest in like Ethereum. Uh, and it's a, it's a flashback piece. And it's a guy that's like, you got to get in on the ground floor. And it becomes like a weird like Wall Street money never sleeps slash James Bond movie. Let's go. Be hilarious. Okay, Will Dark says, they cast Baldwin as Trump, but based on his trigger finger, he should have played Dick Cheney. <laughs> <laughs> solid, solid. solid. Dude, I, I had to explain to my dad recently, not to get political, like, uh, like my dad is like your typical, um, you know, con conservative-ish dude. Uh, he's not super political, right? No, no, he's not. But he's, I was like, I had to explain to him, like, why Liz Cheney is awful. <laughs> it's like I'm trying to explain it to him, like, you just, you just, it's just very hard to put into words, like how, how bad, like, why are we, why are we holding her up now? Uh, it's, it's weird how they now hold up both Dick Cheney and George W. Bush. It's very weird. Okay. Uh, Boob the Snoot says Tom Hardy looks like an older frat boy and the protagonist's best friend's character. I Who is the dude from, Hardy okay, rules. I got one more, uh, in the show, The Punisher, I don't remember if this guy don't, was. Don't show me any more soy boys. That's uh, well. This guy is actually this, the character's literally designed. Ben Ben Barnes might be too good looking. He's from London. Yep. Ben Barnes is born in eighty one, so he's older though. So he's like he's in his forties now. But uh, Ben Barnes could absolutely be uh, be Bond. I got two more. Uh, Jonathan Harris says your your boss coined the term flow bro. Okay, team. I'll just Flo go bro. ask you. Uh, Flo, what does that mean? It's women. Oh. 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 Uh, Nessa Ludden says, Den uh, David Tennant or Matt Smith, I'm down for the bleach test, Brett. No! Yes! Uh, no! Ten crisis no. parties, Brett bleaches I his hair. Not, you guys not. just let us know if you want it to happen live or I not. I can send you, I used to have blonde tips. I used to have, I, my oh hair my used, God. My, my hair was blonde at you one point. Rusted your was, tips there? It was very young, it was parted down the middle. 
Uh, like I was just like you I were just a stopped. '90s boy, right. a I '90s just, heartthrob, like, Brett Dasovic. If you had seen the picture, you thought I just turned off an episode of Home Improvement with Jonathan Taylor Stop Thomas. It. Oh my goodness, I need pics. Uh, and I've got a sweater vest on. Brother, I need pictures. Okay, you heard it here first. Uh, he'll bleach his hair and show us these pictures. What are you gonna do? What about Ben Barnes? I'll, what about I'll bleach his hair. What uh, about, we'll uh, do it live. Great answer. <laughs> I want to know great what you think about Ben Barnes. I don't. Is, could Ben Barnes play the? Hold on, I have character? to look it up. Ben that Barnes. guy on the screen. I don't know. No, no. I don't feel like that. No. no. All right. Matt Hardy. I don't know. I mean, Matt Hardy is a I pro wrestler. I won't say it again, but none of these are really holding up. <laughs> Tom Hardy, uh, sorry. Ali son, I think it's how you say this name, says, doesn't Ezra Miller, ki- Miller kind of fit the casting sheet for the new James Bond movie? Also has a natural affinity to guns and seducing women slash S. Uh, let's go. I'm down for the meme casting. No, I feel like Ezra Miller would have been like run- competing with Rob Pattinson for Batman. Well, no, he could go to a bar oh and God, he could no. take a woman and say, shaken, and then stir the drink. So it's shake the woman, <laughs> stir the drink, mm. shaken, not stirred. Like that's... Th- th- you just... T- okay. No. We were so close to not having an Ezra Miller reference all over. Oh episode. my god. Uh, so close. Johnny Depp Ember Heard. There we got all three. Yeah, right there. we did right, it. Right there at the end of the show. Do we get all a point for that? <laughs> we, no. we, Will you bleach we your get, hair now? I am not bleaching my hair now. Sorry, guys. Oh uh, 20 crisis parties and we'll talk about it. We'll, no, yeah. you said 10. 15. I'm not doing it. Let's go 15. I'll go 15. We're meeting halfway. Shake on it. Why are you doing that for me? When I just I'm the want one you to be a it. success in life. What I, is Hannah Claire going to do at 15, though? No, no, we're we everyone have, has to do something. I'll do something. No, we have to like stagger them so that way, like we have more things see, to look see. forward okay. to. We well, can't do everything all at once. Hey, man. Marketing genius, mm-hmm. absolutely. Dane, let everyone know where they can find. Brett's you. like, let us leave. I don't <laughs> want to do this anymore. <laughs> I'm hoping everybody will forget this conversation later. Ten not, crisis parties. Brett bleaches his hair. I'm not doing it. You guys remember it forever. Everyone, write it down right now in the chat. Someone just draws 15k, like 15 grand, like boom. Oh my gosh. Okay, amazing. there's there's one more from Jonathan Harris here. Jonathan yeah. Harris says. Uh, Ezra Miller is real life James Bond. Cops can't catch him, and he's a womanizer. But he's like not a traditional womanizer. He only likes like women on the spectrum, right? Yeah, uh, he's like a, on the gender spectrum. He's very, um, he's very abusive. So okay, Dane, say it with me, yes. everybody. Brett will bleach his hair after we get ten crisis parties in a row. No. 15. That was a yes no. from Brett. I'm not. So doing 15. This. You admit it. So no. 15. No. He just said it on air. <laughs> We will, Everybody we, write it down. We will come back to this later. Dane, let everyone know where they can find you online. At Dane Font on Twitter. Just the, just at Dane Font on Twitter? Yes. All right. All right. Uh, Hannah Claire, there's one more. Uh, and then, and then re- oh, there's two. There's three more. <laughs> oh, no, it's happening. <laughs> uh, so, uh, Bobcat says, what is Hannah going to do at 15 crisis parties? I don't know who Hannah is. I don't know who Hannah is. Hannah Claire over here is not doing anything because Brett just agreed to bleach his hair at 15 crisis parties. You guys can do this. Then we'll set the bar higher and higher. Oh, God. Uh, Waffle Sensei says, at 20 crisis party, Dave admits waffles are better. <gasps> <gasps> I'd rather die. Oh, my gosh. Guys, you can make this happen. And then I won't. I literally won't. I have standards. At, uh... And then Bad App says, Mary says hi. You have obviously never hung out with Mary in your life, but it's okay, fanboy. Uh, I don't Damn. know if Mary would say such yeah, a thing. Well, I don't know not to you. Uh, da- <laughs> uh, da- what? What? To you? To who? To Bad App. To b- okay, to Bad App. I don't know about s- that. I'm sure she would be perfectly pleasant to you. <laughs> Mary. Hannah Claire, tell everyone where they can find you on social media. You can find me on Instagram at hannahclaire.b. You can find me on Gab at hannahclaireb. You can find me on timcast.com. I'm there several times a day. You can find me here every day for the rest of the week. And you can also find me tonight on IRL, on Timcast IRL. Check it out. It's at 8 o'clock. Very jealous about that because uh, I believe uh, uh, the guest is uh, uh, Nick Searcy, I think. And, and Nick Searcy a fantastic so actor. Heard. So uh, we got two more. Do you want to read them quickly? Caber 2 x says, Hannah Claire, attorney at law, which I think is hilarious. Jonathan Harris says, in 15 crisis parties, Brett will bleach his hair. I've already done my donation. Yes, Jonathan Harris. It's legally binding. If we get 15 crisis parties in a row, Brett is going to bleach his hair. This, uh, we're like $10 away from one more crisis party. Nope, too bad. We almost got it today. I almost uh, bleached my hair. Today? Uh, we didn't get 15 today. I, I'm saying uh, I, we're, we're almost at like the fourth for today, but no fourth one today. That's all right, guys. Uh, Guys, there's still time. That, I'm at the clock. You can do it. I will uh, ramble. I will filibuster this. That that is, that is a hilarious idea. The idea of filibustering to the end of the show. I feel like that's what they do when we're like here. They start sending them in right yeah. at the end. They like, like you're gonna, like, hey, could you tell us? And then like we get ten in a row. They're like, we're gonna keep. You I honestly here. love it. That's the best part of this podcast, though. That we since we went live, I love how interactive it is. It is the. Yeah, it is, it I is have the to most, agree. We we recorded an episode the other day. 
Han- remember Hannah Claire when mm-hmm. we recorded the episode? We were like, "This is weird." Like not having the interaction with everyone. The f- first time I did uh, Tim Cast IRL, that was like all I could think about was that like there were no money guns and like <laughs> I couldn't. I was like waiting for something to happen. It's very strange. You're like, now. This is so bland and normal. It was so scary in the beginning, wasn't it? Like we would just be talking like, Brr! like ah! oh, every time I would yeah. flinch. Like there's nowhere. I really. I want one of the reasons I want Mary to come back is so she can put together a compilation of all the times at least I have flinched when the money guns go off. I def- I like yelled. All right, guys. All right. Uh, if you want to follow me, you can follow me on Instagram at Brett Dasovic. We got one more. It's uh, from Jonathan Harris. Says uh, Hannah is doing a tree call to action for a hostage part. A true call to action for a hostage party. We're, guys, we're five dollars away. Wh- so. Like I said, I have high energy right now. I am drunk with power. I've been ranting like there's no tomorrow. No, oh, there it is. That's what oh, deep, in, that's host- what deep uh, in hostage crisis. We we now we have to now we do have to stay and talk until until it goes because the the it has to check. Uh, it's slightly delayed. Yeah, it's slightly delayed. So. See you guys can do anything i believe in you crisis actors um yes no <laughs> boom tell us some fun facts while we sit here when the lights go off this well now so we get now the money has to shoot oh yeah um i would love to know what is is it happening again was that two that was uh that was a. Uh, I i set it off manually oh and then okay. the second one was the real one boom so you guys he just admitted it. he can't set this off manually you guys need to do stuff Bro, to you make owe me set it off like five crisis parties for Friday's episode. Why? Oh, I do. You only started off two. Yeah. <laughs> so you guys heard it here first. Brett what? is accusing Dane is accusing Brett of being lazy. It's gonna get ugly. That is very. That is very rude. I'm gonna lean That's right out of rude. my own shot. All right, guys. Thank you so much. <laughs> today just has, commented. Today I got has you, been so much fun. Uh, you can follow me if you would like on Instagram at Brett Dasvik for the show again. So much fun live, Monday through Friday, 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. That is noon Pacific right here on YouTube. Uh, If you'd like to listen rather than watch, I don't know why you would, but you can. Amazon Music, Apple Podcasts, Pandora, Spotify, wherever fine podcasts are sold. We are also on social media, Twitter, at PopCulture underscore show. Facebook and TikTok, at PopCultureCrisis. And on Instagram, at PopCultureCrisisPod. We will be back with another episode tomorrow. We'll see you then, guys. Bye. Bye. Bye.